Pariyatti Audio Books presents The Requisites of Enlightenment Bodhipakkhya Dipani A Manual by the Venerable Lady Sayadaw Narrated by Saif Terai Introduction In compliance with the request of Panimana Myo Ok Mwang Po Mya and Trader Mwang Hla during the month of Nayon, 1266 Burmese era, June 1904 Common Era, I shall state concisely the meaning and intent of the 37 Bodhipakkhya Dhammas, the requisites of enlightenment. Four types of capacity for path attainment. It is stated in the Pugala Panyati, the Book of Classification of Individuals, page 160, and in the Anguttara Nikaya, 4, 133, that of the beings who encounter the sasana, that is, teaching of the Buddha, four classes can be distinguished, namely, Uggatha Tanyu, Vipanya Chitanyu, Neya, and Padaparama. Of these four classes of beings and Uggati Tanyu, one who understands immediately is an individual who encounters a Buddha in person and who is capable of attaining the paths and the fruits through the mere hearing of a short, concise discourse. A Vipanya Chitanyu is an individual who has not the capability of attaining the paths and the fruits through the mere hearing of a short discourse, but who yet is capable of attaining the paths and the fruits when the short discourse is expounded to him at some length. Aneya is an individual who has not the capability of attaining the paths and the fruits through the hearing of a short discourse or when it is expounded to him at some length but is one for whom it is necessary to study and take careful note of the sermon and the exposition and then to practice the provisions contained therein for days, months and years in order that he may attain the paths and the fruits. This Naya class of individuals can again be subdivided into many other classes according to the period of practice which each individual finds necessary before he can attain the paths and the fruits and which further is dependent on the paramis, perfections, which each of them has previously acquired and the kilesas, defilements, which each has surmounted. These classes of individuals include on one hand those for whom the necessary period of practice is seven days and on the other those for whom the necessary period of practice may extend to 30 or 60 years. Further classes also arise as for example in the case of individuals whose necessary period of practice is seven days. The stage of an arahat may be attained if effort is made in the first or second period of life. While no more than lower stages of path and the fruits can be attained if effort is made only in the third period of life. Then again putting forth effort for seven days means exerting as much as is in one's power to do so. If the effort is not of the highest order the period of necessary effort becomes lengthened according to the laxity of the effort and seven days may become seven years or longer. If the effort during this life is not sufficiently intense as to enable one to attain the paths and the fruits, then release from worldly ills cannot be obtained during the present Buddha Sasana, while release during the future Buddha Sasanas can be obtained only if the individual encounters them. No release can be obtained if no Buddha Sasana is encountered. It is only in the case of individuals who have secured 
niyata vyakarana sure prediction made by a buddha that an encounter with the buddha sasana and release from worldly ills is certain an individual who has not attained sure prediction cannot be certain either of encountering a buddha sasana or achieving release from worldly ills even though he has accumulated sufficient paramis to make both these achievements possible these are considerations in respect to those individuals who possess the capabilities of attaining the paths and the fruits by putting forth effort for 7 days but who have not obtained sure prediction similar considerations apply to the cases of those individuals who have the potential to attain the paths and the fruits by putting forth effort for 15 days or for longer periods a padama parama is an individual who though he encounters a buddha sasana and though he puts forth the utmost possible effort in both the study and the practice of dhamma cannot attain the paths and the fruits within this lifetime all that he can do is to accumulate good habits and potentials vasana such a person cannot obtain release from worldly ills during this lifetime if he dies while practicing samatha tranquility or vipassana insight and attains rebirth either as a human being or a deva in his next existence he can attain release from worldly ills in that existence within the present buddha sasana thus did the buddha declare with respect to four classes of individuals three types of patients in the same sources referred to above the buddha gave another classification of beings dividing them into three classes resembling three types of sick persons namely a person who is certain of regaining health in due time even though he does not take any medicine or treatment second a person who is certain of failing to make a recovery and dying from the illness no matter to what extent he may take medicines or treatment third a person who will recover if he takes the right medicine and treatment but who will fail to recover and die if he fails to take the right medicine and treatment persons who obtained sure prediction from previous buddhas and who as such are certain of obtaining release from worldly ills in this life resemble the first class of sick persons a pada parama class of individual resembles the second class of sick person just as this second class of sick person has no chance of recovery from his illness a pada parama class of individual has no chance of obtaining release from worldly ills during this life in future lives however he can obtain release either within the present buddha sasana or within future buddha sasanas the story of the youth chattamanava of the frog who became a deva and of the ascetic satchaka are illustrations of person who obtain release from worldly ills in following existences within the present buddha sasana a neya class of individual resembles the third class of sick persons just as a person of a third class is related to the two ways of either recovering or dying from the sickness so is the neya individual related to the two eventualities of either obtaining release from worldly ills during the present life or failing to obtain such release if such a neya individual knowing what is good for him according to his age discards what should be discarded searches for the right teacher and obtains the right guidance from him and puts forth sufficient effort he can obtain release from worldly ills in this very life if however he becomes addicted to wrong views wrong ways of conduct if he finds himself unable to discard sensual pleasures if although able to discard sensual pleasures he does not obtain the guidance of a good teacher 
if he is unable to evoke sufficient effort, if although inclined to put forth effort, he is unable to do so through old age, if although young, he is liable to sickness, in all these cases, he cannot obtain release from worldly ills in this present life. King Ajatasattu, the millionaire, Mahadhana's son, Bhikkhu Sudinna, are cases of persons who could not obtain release from worldly ills in this present existence. King Ajatasattu failed to obtain release because he had committed parasite. It is stated that he will drift in future samsara, round of rebirths, for two asankiyas, unit followed by 140 zeros, of world cycles, after which he will become Pachika Buddha, solitary Buddha. The millionaire Mahananda's son indulged himself so excessively in sensual pleasures during his youth that he was unable to attain tranquility of mind when he grew older. Far from obtaining release from worldly ills, he did not even get the opportunity of associating with the Tiratna. Seeing his plight, the Buddha said to Ananda, Ananda, if this millionaire son has become a bhikkhu in my sasana during his youth or the first period of his life, he would have become an arahat and would have attained Parinibbana in this present life. If otherwise he had become a bhikkhu during the second period of his life, he would have become a anagami and on death would have been reborn in the Suddhavasa Brahmaloka, whence he would attain Parinibbana. In the next alternative, if he had become a bhikkhu in my sasana at the beginning of the third period of life, he would have been either a Sakadagami, once returner, or a Sotapanna, stream enterer, and would have attained permanent release from rebirth in the Apaya Lokas. Thus said the Buddha to the Venerable Ananda. Thus, although he, the millionaire Mahananda's son, possessed Parami, ripe enough to make his present life his last existence, not being a person who had secured sure prediction, he failed to obtain release from worldly ills in this present life because of the upheavals caused by the defilements within him. And this is despite the fact that he had the opportunity of encountering the Buddha Sasana. If further, his period of existence in the lower regions, Apayaloka, is prolonged because of evil acts, done in this existence, he would not be able to rise again and emerge out of those apayalokas in time for the sasana of the future Mitaya Buddha. And after that, the large number of world cycles that follow are world cycles where no Buddhas appear. There being no world cycles within the vicinity of the present world where Buddhas are due to appear. Alas, far indeed is the millionaire's son from release from worldly ills, even though he possessed parami, ripe enough to make his present existence his last one. The general opinion current at the present day is that if the paramis are complete, one cannot miss encountering a Buddha sasana, even if one does not wish to do so and that one's release from worldly ills is ensured even though one may not desire such release. Those of this view fail to pay attention to the existence of niyata, that is, one who has obtained the sure prediction made by a Buddha, and a niyata, one who has not obtained a sure prediction made by a Buddha. Considering the two texts from the Pitakas mentioned above and the story of the millionaire Mahananda's son, it should be remembered that Aniyatta Neya individuals can obtain release from worldly ills in this life only if they put forth sufficient effort. Even if they possess Parami sufficient to enable them to obtain such release, if industry and effort are lacking, the paths and the fruits cannot be obtained within the present Buddha Sasana. 
apart from the three classes of persons, there are also an infinite number of other beings who, like the ascetics Alara and Udaka, possess sufficient parami for release from worldly ills, but who do not get the opportunity because they happen to be in one or the other of the eight inopportune places at Thakhanna, where it is not possible to obtain the paths and the fruits. Necessary Conditions of Practice for Neya and Padaparama Of the four classes of individuals mentioned, the Ugatitanyu classes can attain Sotapatimagga, path of a stream enterer, and the other higher stages of wisdom like Visakha and Anathapindika through the mere hearing of a discourse. It is not necessary for such individuals to practice the Dhamma according to the stages of purification, such as purification of virtue, Sila Visuddhi, of mind, Chitta Visuddhi, and so on. Be it remembered that this is also the case when Devas and Brahmas attain release from worldly ills. Hence, it should be noted that the courses of practice such as Sila Visuddhi and Chitta Visuddhi laid down in the Pali Canon are only for the Neya and Padaparama classes of individuals before the attainment of the Sotapatti Magga. These courses of practice are also for the first three classes of individuals prior to the achievement of the higher stages of the paths and the fruits. In the period after the attainment of Arahatship also, these courses of practice are used for the purpose of Ditta Dhamma Sukha Vihara, dwelling at ease in this present existence. Since Arahats have already gone through them, after the passing of the first thousand years of the present Buddha Sasana, which constituted the times of the Patisambhidha Patta Arahats, that is, Arahats possessing analytical knowledge. The period of the present Buddha Sasana comprises the times of the Neya and Padaparama classes of individuals alone. At the present day, only these two classes of individuals remain. Neya Pugala Of these two classes of individuals, an individual of the Neya class can become a stream enterer, Sotapanna in this present life if he faithfully practices the Bodhipakya Dhamma comprising Satipatthana, four foundations of mindfulness, Samma Padhana, right exertion, etc. If he is lax in his practice, he can become a Sotapanna only in his next existence after being reborn in the Deva planes. If he dies, while still aloof from these bodhipakya dhammas such as satipatthana, etc., he will become a total loss so far as the present Buddha sasana is concerned. But he can still attain release from worldly ills if he encounters the sasana of the next Buddha. Padaparama Pugala An individual of the Padaparama class can attain release within the present Buddha Sasana after rebirth in the Deva planes in his next existence if he can faithfully practice these Bodhipakya Dhammas in his present existence. The age of Aryas, noble ones, still extant. The 5000 years of the present Buddha Sasana constitute all of them the age of saints. This age of saints will continue to exist so long as the Tipitakas, canonical scriptures, remain in the world. The Padaparama class of individuals have to utilize the opportunity afforded by the encountering of the present Buddha Sasana to accumulate as much of the nuclei or seeds of Parami as they can within this lifetime. They have to accumulate the seeds of Sila, morality. They have to accumulate the seeds of Samadhi, concentration. They have to accumulate the seeds of Panya, wisdom. Morality, Sila. 
of these three kinds of accumulations, sila, samadhi, panya, the seeds of sila mean pancha sila, ajivattamaka sila, atthanga uposatha sila, tasangya sila, in respect of ordinary laymen and women, and the bhikkhu sila, in respect of the bhikkhus. Concentration, Samadhi The seeds of Samadhi mean the efforts to achieve Parikamma Samadhi, preparatory concentration, through one or the other of the forty subjects of meditation, such as the ten Kasinyas, meditation devices, or, if further efforts can be evoked, the efforts to achieve Upachara Samadhi, access concentration, or, if still further efforts can be evoked, the efforts to achieve Apana Samadhi, attainment concentration. Wisdom, Panya The seeds of Panya mean the cultivation of the ability to analyze the characteristics and qualities of Rupa, material phenomena, Nama, mental phenomena, Khanda, constituent groups of existence, Ayatana, sense basis, Dhatu, elements, Satcha, truths, and the Paticca Samuppada, dependent origination, as well as the cultivation of insight into the three characteristics of existence, Lakhana, namely, Anicca, impermanence, Dukkha, suffering, and Anatta, impersonality. Of the three kinds of seeds of path knowledge, Magganyana and fruition knowledge, Falanyana, Sila and Samadhi are like ornaments that permanently adorn the world and exist even in the Sunya Kappas, that is, world cycles where no Buddhas arise. The seeds of Sila and Samadhi can be obtained at will at any time. But the seeds of Panya, which are related to Rupa, Nama, Khanda, Ayatana, Dhatu, Satcha and Paticca Samuppada can be obtained only when one encounters a Buddha Sasana. Outside of a Buddha Sasana, one does not get the opportunity of even hearing the mere mention of words associated with Panya, though an infinite number of void world cycles may have passed away. Hence, those persons of the present day who are fortunate enough to be born into the world while a Buddha Sasana flourishes, if they intend to accumulate the seeds of path and fruition knowledge for the purpose of securing release from worldly ills in a future existence within a future Buddha Sasana, should pay special attention to the knowledge of the Paramattha, ultimate realities, which is extremely difficult for one to come across, rather than attempting to accumulate the seeds of Sila and Samadhi. At the least, they should attempt to obtain an insight into how the four great primaries, Mahabhuta, Pathavi, Apo, Tejo and Vayo constitute one's body. If they acquire a good insight into the four great elements, they obtain a sound collection of seeds of Panya which are most difficult of acquisition and this is so even though they may not acquire any knowledge of the other portions of the Abhidhamma. It can then be said that the difficult attainment of rebirth within a Buddha Sasana has been made worthwhile. Knowledge, Vidya and Conduct, Charana Sila and Samadhi constitute Charana, Conduct, while Panya constitutes Vidya, Knowledge. Thus, a Vidya Charana, Knowledge and Conduct constituted Vidya resembles the eyes of a human being, while Charana resembles the limbs. Vidya is like the eyes of a bird, while Charana is like its wings. A person who is endowed with morality and concentration, but lacks wisdom, is like one who possesses complete and whole limbs, but is blind in both eyes. A person who is endowed with Vidya, 
but lacks charana, is like one who has good eyesight, but is defective in his limbs. A person who is endowed with both vijya and charana is like a normal whole person possessing both good eyesight and healthy limbs. A person who lacks both vijya and charana is like one defective in eyes and limbs and is not worthy of being called a human being. Consequences of having charana only Amongst the persons living within the present Buddha sasana, there are some who are fully endowed with morality and concentration, but do not possess the seeds of vijya, such as insight, into the nature of material qualities, mental qualities and constituent groups of existence. Because they are strong in charana, they are likely to encounter the next Buddha sasana. But because they lack the seeds of vijya, they cannot attain enlightenment, even though they hear a discourse of the next Buddha in person. They are like Laludai Thera, Upananda Thera, the Chabagiya Bhikkhus and the King of Kosala, who all lived during the lifetime of the omniscient Buddha. Because they were endowed with the previously accumulated good conduct, such as generosity and morality, they had the opportunity to associate with the Supreme Buddha. But since they lacked previously accumulated knowledge, the discourses of the Buddha, which they often heard throughout their lives, fell, as it were, on deaf ears. Consequences of having Vijya only There are others who are endowed with Vijya, such as insight into the material and the mental qualities and the constituent groups of existence, but who lack charana, such as dana, generosity, nicha sila, constant morality, and uposatha sila, precepts observed on uposatha days. Should these persons get the opportunity of meeting and hearing the discourses of the next Buddha, they can attain enlightenment because they possess vijya. But since they lack charana, it would be extremely difficult for them to get the opportunity of meeting the next Buddha. This is so because there is an antara kappa, intervening world cycle, between the present Buddha sasana and the next. In those cases where these beings wander within the sensuous sphere during this period, it means a succession of an infinite number of existences and rebirths. In these cases, an opportunity to meet the next Buddha can be secured only if all these rebirths are confined to the happy course of existence. If, in the interim, a rebirth occurs in one of the four lower regions, the opportunity to meet the next Buddha would be irretrievably lost. For one rebirth in one of the four lower worlds is often followed by an infinite number of further rebirths in one or other of them. Those persons whose act of dana, generosity, in this life are few, who are ill-guarded in their bodily acts, unrestrained in their speech and unclean in their thoughts, and who thus are deficient in charana, possess a strong tendency to be reborn in the four lower worlds when they die. If through some good fortune they manage to be reborn in the happy course of existence, wherever they may be reborn, they are, because of their previous lack of charana, such as dana, likely to be deficient in riches and likely to meet with hardships, trials, and tribulations in their means of livelihood and thus encounter tendencies to rebirth in the apaya lokas. Because of the lack of charana, of nicha sila and uposata sila, they are likely to meet with disputes, quarrels, anger and hatred in their dealing with other persons, 
in addition to being susceptible to diseases and ailments, and thus encounter tendencies towards rebirth in the Apayalokas. Thus will they encounter painful experiences in every existence, gathering undesirable tendencies, leading to the curtailment of their period of existence in the happy course of existence and causing rebirth in the four lower worlds. In this way, the chances of those who lack charana for meeting the next Buddha are very slight indeed. The Essential Point In short, the essential fact is, only when one is endowed with the seeds of both Vijaya and Charana can one obtain release from worldly ills in one's next existence. If one possesses the seeds of Vijaya alone and lacks the seeds of Charana, such as Dana and Sila, one will fail to secure the opportunity of meeting the next Buddha Sasana. If on the other hand, one possesses the seeds of Charana but lacks the seeds of Vijaya, one cannot attain release from worldly ills even though one encounters the next Buddha Sasana. Hence, those Padaparama individuals of today, be they men or women, who look forward to meeting the next Buddha Sasana, should attempt to accumulate within the present Buddha Sasana the seeds of Charana by the practice of Dana, Sila and Samatha Bhavana, practice of tranquility, meditation, and should also, at the least with respect to Vijaya, try to practice insight into the four great primaries and thus ensure meeting the next Buddha Sasana, and having met it, to attain release from worldly ills. When it is said that Dana is Charana, it comes under the category of Sadha, which is one of the Saddhammas, or practical attributes of good people, which again come under the 15 Charana Dhammas. The 15 Charana Dhammas are 1. Sila, morality 2. Indriya, samvara, guarding the sense doors 3. Bhojane, Matanyuta, moderation in eating 4. Jagariyanu Yoga, wakefulness 5 to 11. Saddhamma, the seven attributes of good and virtuous people. 12 to 15. Four jhanas, meditative absorptions. These 15 dhammas are the property of the highest jhana labhi, attainer of jhanas. So far as sukha vipasaka, practicing insight only, Individuals are concerned. They should possess eleven of the Charana Dhammas, that is, without the four jhanas. For those persons who look forward to meeting the next Buddha Sasana, Dana, Uposata Sila, and the seven Saddhammas are the essentials. Those persons who wish to attain the paths and the fruits thereof in this very life must fulfill the first eleven Charana Dhammas, that is, Sila, Indriya Samvara, Bhojane Matanyuta, Jagariyanu Yoga, and the seven Saddhammas. Herein, Sila means Ajiva Tamaka Nitya Sila, permanent practice of morality ending with right livelihood, and Indriya Samvara means guarding the six sense doors, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind. Bhojane Matanyuta means taking just sufficient food to preserve the balance of the corporeality group in the body and being satisfied with that. Jagariyanu Yoga means not sleeping during the day and sleeping only during one period of the three periods of the night and practicing bhavana, mental concentration, during the other two periods. The seven saddhammas are 1. Saddha, faith 2. Sati, mindfulness 
थ्री हीरी मॉरल शेम फोर उत्तप्पा मॉरल ड्रेड फाइव पाहु सच्चा ग्रेट लर्निंग सिक्स वीरिया एनर्जी डेलिजेंस सेवन पन्या विजडम फॉर दोज हु विश टू बिकम सो तपन्नाज ड्यूरिंग दिस लाइफ देर इज नो स्पेशल नेसेसिटी टू प्रैक्टिस दाना बट लेट दोज हु फाइंड देम सेल्व अनेबल टू इवोक सफिशेंट एफर्ट टूवर्ड्स अक्वायरिंग द एबिलिटी टू अपटेन रिलीज फ्रॉम वर्ल्डली इल्स ड्यूरिंग द प्रेजेंट बुद्ध सासना मेक स्पेशल अटैम्प्स टू प्रैक्टिस दाना एंड उपोसता सीला प्रिसेप्स ऑब्जर्वड ऑन उपोसथा डेज order of practice and those who await the next buddha since the work in the case of those who depend on and await the next buddha consists of no more than acquiring accumulation of parami it is not strictly necessary for them to adhere to the order of the stages of practice laid down in the pali text namely sila samadhi and panya they should not thus defer the practice of samadhi before the completion of the practice of sila or defer the practice of panya before the completion of the practice of samadhi in accordance with the order of the seven visuddhis purifications which are sila visuddhi purification of virtue chitta visuddhi purification of mind ditti visuddhi purification of view khan kha vitarana visuddhi purification by overcoming doubt magga magga nyana dasanna visuddhi purification by knowledge and vision of what is and what is not path patipada nyana dasanna visuddhi purification by knowledge and vision of the way and nyana dasanna visuddhi purification by knowledge and vision they should not postpone the practice of any course for a visuddhi until the completion of the respective previous course since they are persons engaged in the accumulation of as much of the seeds of parami as they can they should contrive to accumulate the largest amount of sila samadhi and panya that lies in their power when it is stated in the pali text that chitta visuddhi should be practiced only after the completion of the practice of sila visuddhi that ditti visuddhi should be practiced only after the completion of the practice of chitta visuddhi that ghana kha vitarana visuddhi should be practiced only after the completion of the practice of ditti visuddhi that the work of anicca dukkha and anatta bhavana contemplation of impermanence suffering and impersonality should be undertaken only after the completion of the practice of khan kha vitarana visuddhi the order of practice prescribed is meant for those who attempt the speedy realization of the paths and the fruits thereof in this very life since those who find themselves unable to call forth such effort and are engaged only in the accumulation of the seeds of parami are persons occupied in grasping whatever they can of good practices it should not be said in their case that the work of samatha manasikara chitta visuddhi the practice of purification of mind consisting of advertence of mind to tranquility should not be undertaken before the fulfillment of sila visuddhi even in the case of hunters and fishermen it should not be said that they should not practice samatha vipassana manasikara advertence of mind towards tranquility and insight unless they discard their work one who says so causes dhammantaraya obstruction to the dhamma hunters and fishermen should on the other hand be encouraged to contemplate the noble qualities of the buddha the dhamma and the sangha they should be induced to contemplate as much as is in their power 
the characteristic of loathsomeness in one's body. They should be urged to contemplate the liability of oneself and all creatures to death. I have come across the case of a leading fisherman who, as a result of such encouragement, could repeat fluently from memory the Pali text and Nisaya, word-for-word -word translation of the Abhidhammata Sangaha and the Pachaya Nidesa of the Pathana, Book of Relations, while still following the profession of a fisherman. These accomplishments constitute very good foundations for the acquisition of Vidya. At the present time, whenever I meet my Dayaka Upasakas, lay disciples who contribute to a bhikkhu's upkeep, I tell them, in the true tradition of a bhikkhu, that even though they are hunters and fishermen by profession, they should be ever mindful of the noble qualities of the three jewels and the three characteristics of existence. To be mindful of the noble qualities of the Tiratna constitutes the seed of Charana. To be mindful of the three characteristics of existence constitutes the seed of Vidya. Even hunters and fishermen should be encouraged to practice those advertences of mind. They should not be told that it is improper for hunters and fishermen to practice advertence of mind towards samatha, tranquility and vipassana, insight. On the other hand, they should be helped towards better understanding should they be in difficulties. They should be urged and encouraged to keep on trying. They are in that stage when even the work of accumulating paramis and good tendencies is to be extolled. Loss of opportunity to attain the seed of Vidya through ignorance of the value of the present times. Some teachers who are aware only of the existence of direct and unequivocal statements in the Pali text regarding the order of practice of the seven Visuddhis but who take no account of the value of the present moment say that in the practice of Samatha and Vipassana no results can be achieved unless Sila Visuddhi is first fulfilled whatever be the intensity of the effort some of the uninformed ordinary folk are beguiled by such statements Thus has the Dhammataraya obstruction to the Dhamma occurred. These persons, because they do not know the nature of the present moment, will lose the opportunity to attain the seeds of Vidya, which are attainable only when a Buddha Sasana is encountered. In truth, they have not yet attained release from worldly ills and are still drifting in samsara, round of rebirths because though they have the occasionally encountered Buddha Sasana in their past inconceivably long samsara, where Buddha Sasana more numerous than the grains of sand on the banks of the Ganges have appeared, they did not acquire the foundation of the seeds of Vijaya. When the seeds are spoken of, there are seeds ripe or mature enough to sprout into healthy and strong seedlings, and there are many degrees of ripeness or maturity. There are also seeds that are unripe or immature. People who do not know the meaning of the passages they recite or who do not know the right methods of practice even though they know the meaning and who thus by custom or tradition read, recite and count their beads while performing the work of contemplating the noble qualities of the Buddha and Anicca, Dukkha and Anatta possess seeds that are unripe and immature. These unripe seeds may be ripened and matured by the continuation of such work in the existences that follow. If opportunity for such continued work occurs, the practice of Samatha until the appearance of Parikamma Nimitta and the practice of Vipassana until insight is obtained into Rupa and Nama 
matter and mind even once a mature sees fulfilled with pith and substance the practice of samatha until the appearance of ugaha nimitta and the practice of vipassana until the acquisition of sammasasana nyana even once a seeds that are still more mature the practice of samatha until the appearance of patibhaga nimitta and the practice of vipassana until the occurrence of udayabhaya nyana even once a seeds that are yet more highly mature if further higher efforts can be made in both samatha and vipassana still more mature seeds can be obtained bringing great success assiduous and successful practice adhikara when it is said in the pali text that only when there has been adhikara in previous buddha sasanas can corresponding jhanas the paths and the fruits be obtained in the following buddha sasanas thus the word adhikara means successful seeds nowadays those who pass their lives with traditional practices that are but imitation samatha and imitation vipassana do not come within the purview of persons who possess the seeds of samatha and vijja which can be called adhikara of the two kinds of seeds those people who encounter a buddha sasana but who fail to secure the seeds of vijja suffer great loss indeed this is so because the seeds of vijja which are related to rupa and nama dhamma bodily and mental processes can only be obtained within a buddha sasana and that only when one is sensible enough to secure them hence at the present time those men and women who find themselves unable to contemplate and investigate at length into the nature of rupa and nama dhamma should throughout their lives undertake the task of committing the four great primaries to memory then of contemplating on the meaning and discussing them and lastly of seeking insight into how they are constituted in their bodies here ends the part showing by the discussion of four classes of individuals and three kinds of individuals as given in the sutta and abhidhamma pitakas that one those persons who within the buddha sasana do not practice samatha and vipassana but allow the time to pass with imitations suffer great loss as they fail to utilize the unique opportunity arising from their existence as human beings within a buddha sasana two this being the time of pada parama and neya classes of persons if they heedfully put forth effort they can secure ripe and mature seeds of samatha and vipassana and easily attain the supra mundane benefit either within this life or in the deva loka deva abodes in the next life within this buddha sasana or within the sasana of the next buddha three they can derive immense benefit from their existence as human beings during the buddha sasana Here ends the exposition of the three kinds and the four kinds of individuals. A word of advice and warning. If the Tipitaka, which contains the discourses of the Buddha, delivered during forty-five vasas (rainy seasons), be condensed and the essentials extracted, the thirty-seven bodhipakya dhammas (requisites of enlightenment) are obtained. These thirty-seven bodhipakya dhammas constitute the essence of the Tipitaka. If these can be further condensed, the seven visuddhis are obtained. If again the seven visuddhis are condensed, they become sila, samadhi, and panya, wisdom. These are called adi sila sasana, the teaching of higher morality, adi citta sasana, the teaching. of higher mentality and adipanya sasana the teaching of higher wisdom they are also called the three sikkhas 
trainings. When Sila is mentioned, the essential for laymen is Nitya Sila. Those people who fulfill Nitya Sila become endowed with Charana, which, with Vidya, enables them to attain the paths and the fruits. If these persons can add the refinement of Uposatta Sila over Nitya Sila, it is much better. For laymen, Nitya Sila means Ajivatthamakka Sila. That Sila must be properly and faithfully kept. If, because they are Puttujanas, worldlings, they break the Sila, it can be re-established immediately by renewing the undertaking to keep the Sila for the rest of their lives. If, on a future occasion, the Sila is again broken, it can again be similarly cleansed and every time this cleansing occurs, the person concerned again becomes endowed with Sila. The effort is not difficult. Whenever Nitya Sila is broken, it can be immediately re-established. In these days, persons endowed with Sila abound in large numbers. But such persons are very rare who have attained perfect concentration in one or other of the Kasina exercises or in the practice of Asubha Bhavna, meditation of loathsomeness, etc. As also are persons who have sometimes attained insight into physical and mental phenomena, the three characteristics, etc. Such persons are very rare because these are times when wrong teachings, vichya dhamma, are ripe and are likely to cause dhammantaraya, danger and obstruction to the dhamma. Wrong teachings By wrong teachings likely to cause obstruction to the dhamma are meant such views, practices and limitations as the inability to see the dangers of samsara the belief that these are times when the paths and the fruits can no longer be attained, the tendency to defer effort until the paramis ripen, the belief that persons of the present day are dvihetuka, the belief that the great teachers of the past were non-existent, etc. Even though it does not reach the ultimate, no kusalakamma, wholesome volitional action, is ever rendered futile. If effort be made, a kusala kamma is instrumental in producing parami in those who do not possess parami. If no effort be made, the opportunity to acquire parami is lost. If those whose paramis are immature put forth effort, their paramis become ripe and mature. Such persons can attain the paths and the fruits in their next existence within the present sasana. If no effort be made, the opportunity for the parami to ripen is lost. If those whose paramis is ripe and mature put forth effort, the paths and the fruits can be obtained within this life. If no effort be made, the opportunity to attain the paths and the fruits is lost. If persons who are dvihetuka put forth effort, they can become tihetuka in the next existence. If they do not put forth effort, they cannot ascend from the stage of dvihetuka and will slide down to the stage of ahetuka. Suppose there is a certain person who plans to become a bhikkhu. If another person says to him, entertain the intention only if you can remain a monk all your life, otherwise do not entertain the idea. This would amount to to Dhammantaraya, an obstruction of Dhamma. The Buddha said, I declare that the mere arising of an intention of performing good deeds is productive of great benefit. To disparage either the act of dana, almsgiving, or to discourage the performer of dana, may invoke Punyantaraya on such a person, that is, he causes obstruction to the performance of meritorious actions. If acts of morality, concentration, meditation and wisdom or those who perform them are disparaged, a dhammantaraya may be caused, that is, an obstruction to dhamma. If obstruction to meritorious actions is caused, one is liable to be bereft of power and influence, of property and riches, and be abjectly poor, 
in the lives that follow. If obstruction to Dhamma is caused, one is liable to be defective in conduct and behavior and be defective of sense and thus be utterly low and debased in the existences that follow. Hence, let all beware. Here ends the section showing how the rare opportunity of rebirth as a human being can be made worthwhile by ridding oneself of the wrong dhammas mentioned above and putting forth effort in this life so as to close the gates of the four lower worlds, apaya, in one's future samsara, round of rebirths, or else to accumulate the seeds that will enable one to attain release from worldly ills in the next following existence or within the next Buddha sasana through the practice of tranquility, samatha, and insight, vipassana, with resolution, zeal, and diligence. Chapter 1 The Requisites of Enlightenment Bodhipakya Dhamma I shall now concisely describe the 37 Bodhipakya Dhammas, the requisites of enlightenment, which should be practiced with energy and determination by those persons who wish to cultivate tranquility and insight and thus make worthwhile the rare opportunity of rebirth as a human being within the present Buddha Sasana. The Bodhipakya Dhammas consist of seven groups, totaling 37 factors. First, Satipatthana, foundations of mindfulness, four factors. Second, Sammapadana, right efforts, four factors. Third, Idipada, Basis of success, four factors. Fourth, Indriya, controlling faculties, five factors. Fifth, Bala, mental powers, five factors. Six, Bhojanga, factors of enlightenment, seven factors. Seven, Magana, path factors. Eight factors. The Bodhipakya Dhammas are so called because they form part Pakya of enlightenment or awakening Bodhi, which here refers to the knowledge of the holy paths, Magganyana. They are Dhammas, mental phenomena, with the function of being proximate causes, Paddhatthana, requisite ingredients, Sambhara and basis or sufficient conditions Upanisaya of path knowledge Magganyana Chapter 2 The Foundations of Mindfulness Satipatthana The word Satipatthana is defined as follows Bhusang Tithati Patthanang Satipatthanam. This means what is firmly established is a foundation. Mindfulness itself is such a foundation. There are four foundations of mindfulness. First, Kayanupasana Satipatthana, contemplation of the body as a foundation of mindfulness. Second, Vedananupasana Satipatthana. Contemplation of feeling as a foundation of mindfulness. Third, Chitta Nupasana Satipatthana Contemplation of the mind as the foundation of mindfulness. Fourth, Dhamma Nupasana Satipatthana Contemplation of mind objects as a foundation of mindfulness. First, Kaya Nupasana Satipatthana means Mindfulness, which is firmly established on body phenomena, such as inhalation and exhalation. Second, Vedanupasana Satipatthana means mindfulness, which is firmly established on feelings, sensations. 
थर्ड चित्तानुपासना साथी पठाना मीन्स माइंडफुलनेस विच इज फर्मली एस्टैब्लिश ऑन थॉट्स और मेंटल प्रोसेस सच एज थॉट्स एसोसिएटेड विथ पैशंस और डिसोसिएटेड फ्रॉम पैशंस फोर्थ धम्मानुपासना सती पठाना मीन्स माइंडफुलनेस विच इज फर्मली एस्टैब्लिश ऑन फिनोमिना सच एज हिंड्रेंसेज निवराना एक्सेट्रा of the four if mindfulness or attention is firmly established on a part of the body such as on out breath and in breath it is tend to mount to attention being firmly established on all things this is because the ability to place one's attention on any object at one's will has been acquired firmly established means if one desires to place the attention on the out breath and in breath for an hour one's attention remains firmly fixed on it for that period if one wishes to do so for 2 hours one's attention remains firmly fixed on it for 2 hours there is no occasion when the attention becomes released from its object on account of the instability of thought conception vittakka For a detailed account of the Sati Patthana, see the Sati Patthana Sutta. Why is it incumbent on us to firmly establish the mind, without fail, on any object, such as the out breath and the in breath? It is because it is necessary for us to gather and control the six types of consciousness, Vijnana, which have been drifting, tempestuously, and untrained. throughout the past inconceivably long and beginningless samsara i shall make it clearer the mind tends to flit around from one to another of the six objects of the senses which lie at the approaches of the six sense doors as an example take the case of a madman who has no control over his mind he does not even know the meal time and wanders around aimlessly from place to place his parents look for him and give him his meal after eating five or six morsels of food he overturns the dish and walks away he thus fails to get a square meal to this extent he has lost control of his mind he cannot control his mind even to the extent of finishing the business of a meal in talking he cannot control his mind to the extent of finishing or completing a sentence the beginning the middle and the end do not agree with one another his talk has no meaning he cannot be of use in any undertaking in this world he is unable to perform any task such a person can no longer be classed as a human being and he has to be ignored this madman becomes a sane and normal person again if he meets a good doctor and the doctor applies a cure thus cured he obtains control of his mind in the matter of taking his meals he can now eat his fill he has control over his mind in all other matters as well he can perform his tasks till they are completed just like others he can also complete his sentences this is an example in this world persons who are not insane but who are normal and have control over their minds resemble such a mad person who has no control over his mind when it comes to the matter of samatha and vipassana just as the madman upsets the food dish and walks away after five or six morsels of food although he attempts to eat his meal these normally sane persons find their attention wandering because they have no control over their minds whenever they pay respects to the buddha and contemplate his noble qualities they do not succeed in keeping their minds fixed on those noble qualities but find their attention being diverted many times on to other objects of thought and thus they even fail to reach the end of itipiso a devotional text beginning with these words that is thus indeed is this exalted one it is as if a man suffering from hydrophobia who seeks water 
feverishly with parched lips, runs away from it with fear when he sees a lake of cool, refreshing water. It is also like a diseased man who, when given a diet of relishing food, replete with medicinal qualities, finds a food bitter to his taste and unable to swallow it, is obliged to spit and vomit it out. In just the same way, these persons find themselves unable to approach the contemplation of the noble qualities of the Buddha effectively and cannot maintain dwelling on them. If in reciting the Itipiso, their recitation is interrupted every time their minds wander, and if they have to start afresh from the beginning, every time such an interruption occurs, they will never reach the end of the text, even though they keep on reciting a whole day or a whole month or a whole year. At present, they manage to reach the end because they can keep on reciting from memory, even though their minds wander elsewhere. In the same way, there are persons who on Uposatha days plan to go to quiet places in order to contemplate the 32 parts of the body, such as kesa, hairs of the head, loma, hairs of the body, etc., or the noble qualities of the Buddha, but who ultimately end up in the company of friends and associates because they have no control over their minds and because of the upheavals in their thoughts and intentions. When they take part in congregational recitations, although they attempt to direct their minds to the Samatha work of the Brahma Viharas, sublime states, such as reciting the formula for diffusing metta, loving kindness, because they have no control over their minds, their thoughts are not concentrated but are scattered aimlessly, and they end up only with the external manifestation of the recitation. These facts are sufficient to show how many persons resemble the insane while performing kusala kammas. Papa Samming Ramate Mano The mind takes delight in evil. Dhammapada 116 Just as water naturally flows down from high places to low places, the minds of beings if left uncontrolled, naturally approach evil. This is the tendency of the mind. I shall now draw, with examples, a comparison between those who exercise no control over their minds and the insane person mentioned above. There is a river with a swift current. A boatman, not familiar with the control of the rudder, floats down the river with the current. His boat is loaded with valuable merchandise for trading and selling at the towns on the lower reaches of the river. As he floats down, he passes stretches of the river lined with mountains and forests where there are no harbors or anchorages for his boat. He thus continues to float down without stopping. When the night descends, he passes towns and village with harbours and anchorages, but he does not see them in the darkness of the night, and thus he continues to float without stopping. When daylight arrives, he comes to places with towns and villages, but not having any control over the rudder of the boat, he cannot steer it to the harbours and anchorages, and thus inevitably he continues to float down until he reaches the great wide ocean. The infinitely lengthy samsara is like the swift flowing river. Beings having no control over their minds are like the boatman who is unable to steer his boat. The mind is like the boat. Beings who have drifted from one existence to another in the sunya, world cycles, where no Buddha sasanas appear, are like the boatman drifting down those stretches of the river lined by mountains and forests, where there are no harbors and anchorages. When at times these beings are born in world cycles where Buddha sasanas flourish, but are in ignorance of them because they happen to be in one or the other eight athakhanyas, inopportune situations, 
they resemble the boatman who floats down the stretches of the river lined by towns and villages with harbors and anchorages but does not see them because it is night when at other times they are born as human beings devas or brahmas within a buddha sasana but fail to secure the paths and the fruits because they are unable to control their minds and put forth effort to practice vipassana exercises of the satipatthanas thus continuing still to drift in samsara they resemble the boatman who sees the banks lined by towns and villages with harbors and anchorages but is unable to steer towards them because of his inability to control the rudder and thus continues inevitably to drift down towards the ocean in the infinitely lengthy samsara those beings who have obtained release from worldly ills within the sasanas of the buddhas who have appeared whose numbers exceed the grains of sand on the banks of the river ganges are beings who had control over their minds and who possessed the ability of retaining their attention on any desired object at will through the practice of the satipatthanas this shows the trend of the wandering or course of existence of those beings who do not practice the satipatthanas even though they are aware of the fact that they have no control over their minds when it comes to the practice of samatha and vipassana comparisons may also be made with the taming and training of bullocks for the purpose of yoking them to plows and carts and to the taming and training of elephants for employment in the service of the king or on battlefields in the case of the bullock the young calf has to be regularly herded and kept in a cattle pen then a nose rope is passed through its nostrils and it is tied to a post and trained to respond to the rope's control it is then trained to submit to the yoke and only when it becomes amenable to the yoke's burden it is put to use for plowing and drawing carts and thus effectively employed to trade and profit this is the example of the bullock in this example just as the owner's profit and success depends on the employment of the bullock in the drawing of plows and carts after training it to become amenable to the yoke so does the true benefit of lay persons and bhikkhus within the present sasana depend on training in samatha and vipassana in the present buddha sasana the practice of sila visuddhi resembles the training of the young calf by herding it and keeping it in cattle pens just as if the young calf is not so herded and kept in cattle pens it would damage and destroy the properties of others and thus bring liability on the owner so too if a person lacks sila visuddhi the three unwholesome kammas would run riot and the person concerned would become subject to worldly evils and to the evil results indicated in the dhamma the efforts to develop kaya gatasati resembles the passing of the nose rope through the nostrils and training the calf to respond to the rope after tying it to a post just as when a calf is tied to a post it can be kept wherever the owner desires it to be it cannot run loose so when the mind is tied to the body with the rope of satipatthana that mind cannot wander but is obliged to remain wherever the owner desires it to be the habits of a disturbed and distracted mind acquired during the inconceivably long samsara become weakened a person who performs the practice of samatha and vipassana without first attempting body contemplation resembles the owner who yokes the still untamed bullock to the cart or plow without the nose rope such an owner would find himself unable to control the bullock as he desires because the bullock is wild and because it has no nose rope it will either try to run off the road or try to break loose by breaking the yoke on the other hand a person who first tranquilizes and trains his mind with body contemplation before turning his mind to the practice of samatha 
and vipassana will find that his attention will remain steady and his work will be successful in the case of the elephant the wild elephant has first to be brought out from the forest into the field hitched on to a tame trained elephant then it is taken to a stockade and tied up securely until it is tamed when it thus becomes absolutely tame and quiet it is trained in the various kinds of work in which it will be employed in the service of the king it is only then that it is used in state functions and on battlefields the realm of sensual pleasures resemble the forest where the wild elephant enjoys himself the buddha sasana resembles the open field into which the wild elephant is first brought out the mind resembles the wild elephant faith saddha and desire chanda in the sasana dhamma resemble the tame trained elephant to which the wild elephant is hitched and brought out in the open sila visuddhi purification of virtue resembles the stockade the body or parts of the body such as outbreath and inbreath resemble the post in the stockade to which the elephant is tied kayagata sati resembles the rope by which the wild elephant is tied to the post the preparatory work towards samatha and vipassana resembles the preparatory training of the elephant the work of samatha and vipassana resembles the king's parade ground or the battlefield other points of comparison can also be easily recognized thus i have shown by the examples of the madman the boatman the bullock and the elephant the main points of body contemplation which is by ancient tradition the first step that has to be undertaken in the work of proceeding upwards from sila visuddhi within the sasanas of all the buddhas who have appeared in the past inconceivably long samsara the essential meaning is that whether it be out breathing and in breathing or by iriyapatha four postures going standing sitting lying or by sampajanya clear comprehension or by dhatu manasikara advertence of mind on the elements or by atika sanya contemplation of bones one must put forth effort in order to acquire the ability of placing one's attention on one's body and its postures for as long as one wishes throughout the day and night at all waking hours if one can keep one's attention fixed for as long as one wishes then mastery has been obtained over one's mind thus does one attain release from the state of a madman one now resembles the boatman who has obtained mastery over his rudder or the owner of the tamed and trained bullock or the king who employs the tamed and trained elephant there are many kinds and many grades of mastery over the mind the successful practice of body contemplation is in the buddha sasana the first stage of mastery over one's mind those who do not wish to follow the way of samatha but desire to pursue the path of pure vipassana which is the way of the sukha vipassaka individual should proceed straight to vipassana after the successful establishment of body contemplation if they do not want to practice body contemplation separately and if they mean to practice in sight with such industry that it may carry kaya gata sati with it they will succeed provided that they really have the necessary wisdom and industry the body contemplation kaya gata sati that is associated with udaya bhayanyana knowledge arising from contemplation of the arising and vanishing of mental and physical phenomena which clearly sees their coming into existence and passing away is very valuable indeed in the samatha method by practicing the body contemplation of out and in breathing one can attain up to rupa vachara chatuttha jhana the fourth jhana 
of the form sphere by practicing vanya manasikara of the kaya gata sati of the 32 parts of the body such as kesa hair of the head loma hair of the body etc one can attain all the eight samapatis and by practicing patikula manasikara of the same body contemplation one can attain the first jhana if a person is attained in the process one also can attain the paths and the fruits even if contemplation is not arrived at in the practice of samatha and vipassana if the stage is reached where one attains control over one's mind and the ability to keep one's attention fixed on wherever one wishes it to be it was said by the buddha that such a one can be said to be one who enjoys the flavor of amata or nibbana amatang te sang paribhutang ye sang kaya gata sati paribhuta those who enjoy body contemplation kaya gata sati enjoy the deathless amata here amata means great peacefulness or tranquility of mind in its original untamed state the mind is highly unstable in its attentiveness and thus is parched and hot in its nature just as the insects that live on capsicum are not aware of its heat just as beings pursuing the realm of tanha craving are not aware of tanha's heat just as being subject to anger and pride are not aware of the heat of pride and anger so are beings unaware of the heat of unsettled minds it is only when through kaya gata sati the unsettled condition of the mind disappears that they become aware of the heat of an unsettled mind having attained the state of the disappearance of that heat they develop a fear of a relapse to that heat the case of those who have attained the first jhana or knowledge of rise and fall udaya bhaya jnana through body contemplation kaya gata sati pathana needs no elaboration hence the higher the attainment that one reaches the more difficult does it become for one to be apart from kaya gata sati the arya pugalas holy ones use the four sati pathanas as mental nutriment until they attain parinibbana the ability to keep one's attention fixed on parts of the body such as out breath and in breath for one or two hours takes one to the culmination of one's work in 7 days or 15 days or a month or 2 months or 3 months or 4 months or 5 months or 6 months or a year or 2 years or 4 years according to the intensity of one's effort for the method of practicing out breathing and in breathing see my anapana dipani there are many books by past teachers on the method of the 32 parts of the body in this method kesa hair of the head loma hair of the body nakha nails danta teeth tacho skin are known as tacha panyachaka group ending with tacho as the fifth if attention can be firmly fixed on these five the work of kaya gata sati body contemplation is accomplished for chatu dhatu vavathana analysis of the four great primaries rupa vipassana contemplation of physical phenomena and nama vipassana contemplation of mental phenomena see my lakkhana dipani vidya magga dipani ahara dipani and anatta dipani here ends a concise explanation of kaya gata sati bhavana which is one of the four sati pathanas and which has to be established first in the work of bhavana mental contemplation by neya and pada parama individuals for the purpose of attaining the paths and the fruits within a buddha sasana chapter 3 the four right efforts sammapadana the word sammapadana 
is defined as follows Bhusang dahati vahatiti padhanang sammadeva padhanang sammapadhanang This means padhana is an effort carried out strongly, intensively. If carried out properly, rightly, it is sammapadhana, right effort. It is an effort that has not in it any element of unwillingness. It is also called zealous energy, atapaviriya. It is an effort that has the four characteristics spoken of in the following text. Kamantacho cha naharu cha atti cha avasi sattu sarire upasusattu mang salohitang yang tang parisathamena purisa viriena purisa parakamena patabhang na tang apapunitava viriyasa santhanang bhavisatti Let only my skin and sinews and bones remain and let my flesh and blood in the body dry up. I shall not permit the course of my effort to stop until I win that which may be won by human ability, human effort and human exertion. These characteristics may be summed up as follows. Let the skin remain. Let the sinews remain. Let the bones remain. Let the flesh and blood dry up. It is the effort that calls forth the determination. If the end is attainable by human effort, I shall not rest or relax until it is attained, until the end is grasped and reached. It is the effort of the kind put forth by the Venerable Bhikkhu Sona and the Venerable Chakkupala. It is only when the jhana, the paths and the fruits are not attained after effort is put forth on the scale as prescribed by the Buddha and throughout one's life that it can be said that the cause of the failure lies in the nature of the present times or in one being dvihetuka or in one's lack of sufficient previously accumulated parami. In this world, some persons, far from putting forth the full scale of the effort prescribed by the Buddha, do not even try to set up body contemplation effectively in order to cure their minds of aimless drifting. And yet, they say, that their failure to attain the paths and the fruits is due to the fact that these are times that preclude such attainment. There are others of the same class who say that men and women of the present day have not the necessary accumulation of parami perfections to enable them to attain the paths and the fruits. There are yet others of the same class who say that men and women of the present day are dvihetuka, all these people say so because they do not know that these are times of the Neya class of individuals who fail to attain the paths and the fruits because they are lacking in Sammapadhana effort. If proper Sammapadhana effort be put forth with dedicated intention, Pahitatta, where a thousand put forth effort, three, four or five hundred of them can attain the supreme achievement. If a hundred put forth effort, 30, 40 or 50 of them can attain the supreme achievement. Here, Pahitatta, intention, means determination to adhere to the effort throughout one's life and to die, if need be, while still making the effort. The venerable Sonathera's effort consisted of keeping awake throughout the three months of the Vassa, rainy season, the only body postures adopted being sitting and walking. The Venerable Chakkupala's effort was one of the same order. The Venerable Pustadeva Thera achieved the paths and the fruits only after 25 years of the same order of effort. In the case of Venerable Mahasiva Thera, the effort lasted 30 years. At the present day, there is a great need for such kind of Sammapadana effort. It happens that those who put forth the effort have not sufficient foundations in the pariyatti, learning of the doctrine, while those who possess sufficient pariyatti, foundations, live involved in the palibodas, obstacles, of the business of bhikkhus. According as they live in towns and villages, these include such matters as discussing the Dhamma, delivering sermons and discourses, and writing books on the Dhamma. 
There are persons who are unable to put forth Samma Padana effort for lengthy periods without a break. Some persons are inclined to say that when their paramis become ripe for them to attain release from worldly ills, they can easily obtain that release and that, as such, they cannot put forth effort now when they are not certain whether or not that effort will result in release. They do not appear to compare the suffering occasioned by 30 years effort now with the suffering they will encounter if in the interim, before they attain release, they are cast in hell regions for a hundred thousand years. They do not appear to remember that the suffering occasioned by 30 years effort is not as bad as the suffering caused by just three hours in the hell regions. They may say that the situation will be the same if no release is attained after 30 years effort, that is, there will be no closer to release. But if the person is sufficiently mature for release, they will attain that release through that effort. If they are not sufficiently mature, they will attain release in the next life. Even if they fail to attain release within the present Buddha Sasana, the Kamma of repeated efforts at mental development, Bhavana Achinna Kamma, is a powerful Kamma. Through it, one can avoid the Apaya regions and can meet the next Buddha after continuous rebirths in the Sugati existence, happy course of existence. In the case of those who do not put forth effort, they will miss the opportunity of release, even though they are mature enough to obtain release through 30 years effort. For lack of effort, they have nothing to gain and everything to lose. Let all therefore acquire the eye of wisdom and beware of the danger of not making effort. There are four kinds of Sammapadana. First, Upananang Akusalanang Dhammanang Pahanaya Vayamo Effort to overcome or reject evil unwholesome acts that have arisen or are in the course of arising. Second, Anupananang a kusalanang dhammanang anupadaya vayamo Effort to avoid, not only in this life, but also in the lives that follow, the arising of unwholesome acts that have not yet arisen. Third, anupannanang kusalanang dhammanang upadaya vayamo Effort to arouse the arising of wholesome acts that have not yet arisen. Fourth, Upannanang kusalanang dhammanang bhiyo bhavaya vayamo Effort to increase and to perpetuate the wholesome acts that have arisen or are in the course of arising. Arisen and not arisen, unwholesome acts, uppana and anuppana akusala kamma. In the personality of every being wandering in sansara, there are two kinds of akusala kammas unwholesome volitional actions namely Uppana Akusula Kamma and Anupanna Akusula Kamma Uppanna Akusula Kamma arisen unwholesome acts means past and present Akusula Kammas they comprise unwholesome volitional actions committed in the interminable series of past world cycles and past lives among these Urkusula Kammas, there are some that have spent themselves by having produced rebirths in the Apaya Lokas, the four low and miserable regions of existence. There are others that await the opportunity of producing rebirths in the Apaya Lokas and thus constitute potentialities for rebirth in the Apaya Lokas that accompany beings from world cycle to world cycle and from life to life. Every being in whom Sakkaya Ditti, personality belief, resides, be he a human being or a Deva or Brahma, possesses an infinitely large store of such past debts, so to say, consisting of Urkusala Kammas that have in them the potentiality of producing rebirths in the lowest avichi, hell. Similarly, there are infinite stores of other Kammas capable of producing rebirths in the other Apaya Lokas. These past kammas which await a favorable opportunity for producing rebirth resultants and which accompany beings from life to life until they are expended are called upanna. These past upanna akusala kammas have their roots in sakkaya ditti. 
as long as sakka aditi exists they are not expended without producing resultants but when with insight into the anatta lokanna the characteristic of impersonality one rids oneself of sakka aditi from that instant all the uppanna akasula kammas lose their potentiality and disappear from the store of past akasula kammas from that existence one will no longer become subject to rebirth in the apaya lokas in future sansara not even in one's dreams anuppanna akasula kammas means future akasula kammas beginning with the next instant in this life all the new evil and unwholesome acts that one commits whenever opportunity occurs in the course of this present life and in the succession of lives that are to follow are called anuppanna these new akasula ducharita kammas that one can commit even during a single lifetime can be infinite in number all these anuppanna akasula kammas have their origin in personality belief if at any time personality belief disappears all the new anuppanna akasula kammas also disappear even at that instant from the personality of the beings concerned leaving no residue here disappear means that there will be no occasion starting from the next instant in the future succession of lives and the future succession of world cycles when new akasula kammas are perpetrated throughout future anamataga sansara beginningless round of rebirths those beings will not commit even in their dreams any akasula kamma such as panatipata killing any living being if personality belief remains even though the being is a universal monarch exercising sway over the whole universe he is as it were sandwiched between hell fires in front and hell fires behind and is thus hedged in between the two akasula kammas of uppanna and anuppanna he is thus purely a creature of hell heat similarly the kings of the devalokas saka the king of the tava tingsa devaloka and brahmas of the rupa and arupa brahma worlds are all purely creatures of hell heat they are creatures that are hitched on to the chains of hell and the apaya regions in the great whirlpool of sansara they are purely creatures who drift or sink in the infinitely long sansara beings have to cultivate the desire for encountering a buddha sasana which is an extremely difficult achievement hedged in as they are from before and behind by the hell fire of uppanna and anuppanna akasula kammas they have to cultivate earnestly the desire to extinguish those fires once and for all hence those beings who do encounter buddha sasanas have to make the extinguishing of the hell fires of uppanna and anuppanna the sole task for their future welfare the task of extinguishing the unwholesome acts arisen and not arisen consisting of ridding oneself of sakaya ditti and no more if sakaya ditti is uprooted the two akasula kammas are entirely extinguished bon sinsan sotapannas like visakha and anatha pindika who are infinitely numerous among humans devas and brahmas are beings who have attained release from the state of sinking and drifting into the great whirlpool of sansara round of rebirths from the moment sakaya ditti was uprooted they are beings who have attained the first stage of nibbana called sa upadisesa nibbana nibbana with the five constituent groups of existence remaining although they are liable to wander in the round of rebirths for many more lives and many more world cycles they are no longer worldly beings having become bon sinsan aryas noble ones they are beings of the lokuttara supramundane sphere here ends the part showing uppanna and anuppanna akasula kammas from which sotapannas have obtained their release arisen and not arisen wholesome acts uppanna and anuppanna kusala kamma i shall now show the division of kusala kammas into uppanna and anuppanna first with reference to the three qualities of sila samadhi and panya 
and second with reference to the seven purifications satta visuddhi wrong view ditti when it is said that sansara the round of rebirths is very terrifying it is because of the evil deeds do charitta arisen upanna in the past and present and not arisen anupanna but still to arise in the future that is potential which have wrong view as their root when it is said that there is no hiding place no haven on which one can depend it is because of the self same evil deeds and wrong views when wrong views are extinguished both old and new evil deeds do charita are also extinguished when old and new evil deeds are extinguished release from rebirth in the lower worlds apaya is attained and only exalted states of humans devas celestials and brahmas higher divinities remain since beings have to cultivate a desire for an encounter with a buddha sasana in order to secure release from rebirth in the lower worlds and from old and new evil deeds now that they have encountered the teaching of the buddha buddha sasana in this very existence it behoves them to make an attempt of extinguishing the great evil of wrong views wrong view is established in beings in three planes or layers namely vitikamma transgression in deeds or speech pariyuthana obsession of the mind by evil thoughts mental involvement with the stains or defilements kilesa anusaya proclivity or latent disposition to the stains these layers are the realm of sakkaya ditti they may be called coarse middling and fine aspects of wrong view i shall now discuss how the results of ditti wrong view the 10 evil deeds enter into these layers of ditti the coarse layer of wrong view viti kamma comprises a kusala kamma committed through over deeds and speech the middle layer of pariyuthana comprises the evils that occur in thoughts the finest layer anusaya is the evil that lies latent in the personalities of beings throughout the beginningless round of rebirths anamataga samsara though it may not yet result in manifestations of acts speech or thoughts it may be said that there are three kinds of fire in a matchbox the first is the fire that lies latent in the whole box of matches the second is the fire that ignites the matchstick when it is struck the third is the fire that is transferred to another object when it is brought in contact with the flame of the matchstick such a fire is that which burns rubbish heaps clothes houses monasteries and villages this last fire the fire that is transferred to another object resembles the coarse viti kamma ditti manifested in transgressions by acts and speech the fire that burns the matchstick resembles pariyuthana ditti which is manifested in mind every time it comes in contact with objects of thought the fire that is latent in the box of matches resembles the anusaya ditti that resides in the personalities of beings throughout the succession of lives in anamat agga sansara the unfathomable eons of existence this fire that lies latent in the box of matches does not burst into flame so long as the match head is not rubbed with the nitrous surface of the match box it does not cause any harm even if it is kept in contact with highly inflammable articles such as gunpowder in the same way the anusaya ditti lies latent in the personality and does not manifest itself so long as it does not come into contact with evil objects of thought or other causes of evil when however evil objects of thought or other causes impinge on the six sense doors the anusaya ditti is disturbed and begins to make itself manifest in the mind door or in the plane of the pariyuthana through the function of volition if at that time the manifestations can be suppressed by good doctrines they disappear from the pariyuthana plane and return to the anusaya plane and reside there as latent natural tendencies if they cannot be suppressed they continue to manifest themselves as developing volitions if they are further disturbed in the pariyuthana plane they manifest themselves in the vitikamma plane in the form of evil speech or evil acts 
in this world, if a person can control himself in the Vitikamma and the Pariyutthana planes, and if thereby his acts, speech and thoughts are, so to say, clean and unsoiled, he is called a good, pious or moral man. But such a person is not aware of the Anusaya plane. If the Anusaya plane is not destroyed, even if perfect control is exercised over the Vitikamma and Pariyotthana planes, such control can only be of a temporary nature. If the person is strong in the observance of good principles, the control can last for the whole of this life. But there can be no certainty about the next life when upheavals in these two planes may occur. Lobha, greed, dosa and moha also have each of them three planes. In order to destroy these three planes of ditti completely, men have to put forth effort in the three sikhas of sila, samadhi and panya. They have to practice the seven visuddhis. As far as lay people are concerned, sila means ajivatthakamma sila, which is nitya sila for them. The athanga uposata sila and the sangha sila add refinement to nitya sila. It is a good thing to be able to observe them, but it does not matter much if they cannot be observed. For those people who assume the yellow garb of Isis, the Ajivattamakka Sila and the Sanya Sila constitute Sila. The Athanga Uposata Sila is included in the Dasanga Sila. For Bhikkhus, the Chatupari Siddhi Sila constitutes morality Sila. Preliminary access and full concentration which are obtained by mindful body contemplation such as on out and in breath or by meditating on the bones of the body as one of the 32 parts constitute concentration, samadhi. The four mundane purifications together with supramundane purification by knowledge and vision, lokuttara, jnanandasana, visuddhi, these constitute wisdom, panya. Among the three planes of wrong view, morality, sila, destroys the plane of transgression, vitikamma. This means that if one possesses the purification of morality, sila, visuddhi, upheavals in deeds and speech cannot occur. Concentration, samadhi, can destroy wrong view on the plane of mental obsession, pariyutthana. This means that if attention to meditative practice, bhavna manasikara, is firmly established, upheavals in thought cannot occur. Wisdom, panya, destroys wrong view in the anusaya plane of proclivity. This means that if insight is obtained into the entire personality as a mere grouping of mental and bodily processes, nama and rupa, and as a grouping that is impermanent, painful and without a self, then the latent store of wrong view that may manifest itself in the wrong notions of a person, pugala, living being, satta, permanency, pleasure and self, atta, will disappear. So long as this proclivity to wrong view, titti anusaya exists, the destruction of the plane of transgression by morality and of the plane of mental obsession by concentration can be no more than temporary. In the division of acts as arisen and not arisen, upanna, anupanna, there are two methods. One, division based on this life as the starting point and two, division based on the past, infinite samsara, as the starting point. I shall now show the method based on this life as the starting point. In those who have never undertaken to keep moral precepts, sila, in this life, there is no arisen morality, upanna sila. In those who at one time or the other in this life have undertaken to keep sila, such morality is arisen. The same applies to concentration and wisdom. What was attained in this life is arisen, and what was never attained in this life is not arisen. In the method based on the past samsara as the starting point, there are two kinds of morality, mundane and supramundane, lokya and lokuttara sila. Mundane morality is arisen, upanna, because there is no being who at one time or other in the past, samsara, has not undertaken to keep the rules of mundane morality. But supramundane morality, lokuttara sila, as far as unliberated worldlings, puttujana, 
are concerned is not arisen anupanna concentration samadhi is also of two kinds mundane and supramundane since mundane concentration had been attained on many occasions by beings in the past samsara it is arisen supramundane concentration in the case of worldlings is not arisen wisdom is likewise of these two kinds mundane and supramundane the four mundane purifications lokiya visuddhi a mundane wisdom and a arisen upanna for those who have encountered buddha sasanas in the past and have practiced these purifications they are not arisen anupanna for those who have never encountered any buddha sasana in the past samsara the purification by knowledge and vision nanada sanna visuddhi is supramundane wisdom lokuttara panya as far as worldlings are concerned it is for them not arisen since it was never attained by them in the past samsara i shall now show the four modes of effort padhana first the opportunity of ridding oneself completely of arisen that is old unwholesome kamma upanna akusala kamma obtains only when one encounters a buddha sasana second the opportunity of preventing the appearance of new unwholesome kamma anupanna akusala kamma in the series of existences that are to follow is also one that can arise only through encountering a buddha sasana even though one's journey through samsara is infinitely long if one does not encounter a buddha's teaching no opportunity of ridding oneself of these two classes of unwholesome kamma can arise this is because the task of ridding oneself of them is identical with the task of destroying the anusaya plane of sakkaya ditti personality belief that is the latent disposition for such a wrong view and the destruction of that anusaya plane is the work of anatta bhavana that is meditation on not self which appears only at the time of a buddha sasana those beings who are destined to be solitary buddhas pachcha buddha had first acquired the seeds of anatta bhavana during the encounter with a sasana when there is no buddha sasana in the world even the mere sound of anatta is not heard and by the sound of anatta is meant the sound of such terms which formulate the impersonal nature of existence as rupa nama khanda dhatu ayatana and patichcha samuppada the whole of the abhidhamma pitaka is replete with the sound of anatta and so is the whole of its compendium the abhidhammatta sangha the work of anatta bhavana consists first of fulfilling purification of morality sila visuddhi and then of setting up body contemplation kaya gata sati and after tranquilizing and controlling one's madly tempestuous and unstable mind of putting forth effort in the work of samatha and vipassana tranquility and insight meditation it is only when the plane of proclivity to wrong views ditti anusaya is destroyed through such effort that all the wrong views arisen and not arisen upanna and anupanna miccha ditti and the evil deeds ducharita disappear third the effort to cause the appearance in one's personality of wholesome actions kusala kamma which has not appeared before fourth the effort to preserve and maintain in one's personality the wholesome actions that have already appeared these efforts should be undertaken for a successful completion of anatta bhavana after the establishment of body contemplation arisen and not arisen morality upanna and anupanna sila anupanna sila that is morality which has never occurred in the life of worldlings puttujana throughout the past infinite samsara consists of three factors of the supramundane eightfold path right speech right action and right livelihood they are comprised in the path of stream entry sotapatti magga and have nibbana as their object this morality destroys the evil acts manifesting themselves in action speech and wrong modes of earning a living 
From the moment that this destruction has taken place, the evils appearing in those three forms do not appear again, even for an instant, throughout the succession of many lives and many world cycles that follow. This class of supramundane morality is achieved only when anatta bhavana is successfully practiced. Beings must attempt to achieve this anupanna sila while yet living at the time of a Buddha sasana. This means that from the moment of setting up purification of morality, sila visuddhi, together with body contemplation, kaya gatasati, up to the successful completion of anatta bhavana, beings must attempt without relaxation to practice the 37 bodhipakkhya dhamma, the requisites of enlightenment. Upanna sila, which has often occurred in past infinite sansara, means mundane morality, lokiya sila, or sense sphere morality, kama vachara sila. When it is said that attempts must be made to attain a fixation of that sila, that is, its firm preservation being the fourth right effort, it must be understood that there are two planes of mundane morality, namely, niyama, stable, unchangeable, and Aniyama, unstable, changeable. The state of an Arya, saint, is that of stability, Niyama, while the state of a worldling, Puttujana, is that of instability. The mundane morality of the sense sphere attains to the plane of stability in the personalities of stream enterers, Sotapanna. Saints who are Sotapannas do not transgress the Ajivatthamakka Sila, the eightfold morality ending with right livelihood. Even in their dreams throughout the series of lives and world cycles that follow until the final attainment of Parinibbana. In the case of unliberated worldlings, Puttujana, however, the mundane morality of the sense sphere is still on the plane of instability, Anyama. These persons have been virtuous lay individuals on an infinite number of occasions in the past. They have also suffered in the lower worlds of misery, apaya loka, countless numbers of times. They have been virtuous hermits and bhikkhus on other infinite occasions. In all their past existences, however, they have never been free from the danger of being liable to rebirth in the lower worlds of misery. Even now, the number of beings in the lower worlds is countless, and so is the number of humans, devas and brahmas who are on the brink of being born in the lower worlds of misery. Hence, those beings who possess mundane morality of the sense sphere, kama vachara lokiya sila, which is still unstable, aniyama, and which, so to say, resides in them for just a temporary short moment, should attempt, while there is yet opportunity within a Buddha sasana, to transform it into the plane of stability, niyama, they should set up body contemplation, and having done so, should practice the bodhipakkhya dhammas until the function of anatta bhavana is successfully completed. Arisen and not arisen concentration, upanna and anupanna samadhi. Concentration, samadhi, as well as wisdom, panya, have likewise two planes, that is, stability, niyama, and instability, a niyama. The full concentration of the jhanas, apanna samadhi, which is identical to the eight or nine meditative attainments, samapatti, becomes stable only on the attainment of the stage of a non-returner, anagami. The wisdom, panya, that carries the tardi quality of equability becomes stable only in the stage of an arhat. I shall now describe the concentration and wisdom that sotapannas, stream winners, achieve. In accordance with Chula Vedalla Sutta, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration, which are comprised within Sotapatti Magga, path of stream entry, having Nibbana as object are called supramundane concentration, Lokuttara Samadhi. These three constituents of the Samadhi group within the supramundane eightfold path can extinguish once and for all through overcoming by eradication, Samucheda Pahana, the mental evils of covetousness, abhijja, and ill will, vyapada, which have michcha vayama, wrong effort, michcha sati, wrong attention, and michcha samadhi, wrong concentration, as their roots. From the instance they are eradicated, those mental evils of covetousness and ill will do not arise again throughout the many lives and world cycles that may follow. 
It is the kind of concentration that can be achieved only within a Buddha Sasana when meditative cultivation of the Anatta doctrine, Anatta Bhavna, appears. Hence, now that beings have encountered a Buddha Sasana, they should endeavor to achieve that so for not arisen kind of concentration, Anupanna Samadhi, before they become severed from the Sasana by the vicissitudes of wandering in Sangsara. This means that being with body contemplation, they should practice the Bodhipakya Dhammas until they attain the successful culmination of Anatta Bhavana. Upanna Samadhi, which has occurred a countless number of times in infinite past Sangsara, consists of concentration of the sense sphere, Kama Vachara Samadhi, that is, neighborhood concentration of the fine material, Rupa Vacharas, and immaterial sphere, Arupa Vacharas. When it was said that attempts must be made for the stability niyama, of arisen concentration, it must be understood that this mundane concentration has likewise two planes, namely stability and instability. The mundane right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration with which Ariyas, noble ones, are endowed are on the plane of stability niyama. The evil deeds, do charita, of covetousness and ill will do not arise in them even in dreams throughout the succession of lives and world cycles that follow until the final attainment of Parinibbana. The triple path group of mundane concentration with which worldings are endowed is on the plane of instability, Arniyama. In the infinite past Sangsara, these persons have been men of Samadhi, hermits, isis of Samadhi and bhikkhus of Samadhi endowed with jhanas and supernormal powers, Iddhi during countless existences. In the life period of every world system, there are four world cycles, kappa, each of unfathomable duration. In three of these world cycles, these worldlings have been Brahmas, in the Brahma worlds. In every one of these world systems, there have also appeared apaya worlds of misery. And these worlds of misery have been filled by these self-same Brahma gods, hungry ghosts, peta, beings of hell, animals and titans, asura. Compared with the infinitely long sangsara, the period of each of these world systems is just like that of an eye wink. Thus it behoves us all to attempt the transformation of the instability of the three constituents of the samadhi group which we temporarily acquired in the past on many occasions to the stage of stability, niyama while we still have the opportunity now in the midst of an age in which the Buddha Sasana exists. Hence we should, after first setting up body contemplation, practice the Bodhipakya Dhammas until successful completion of Anatta Bhavana. Arisen and not arisen wisdom Upanna and Anupanna Panya In accordance with the Chula Vedalla Sutta, right understanding and right thought, which are compromised in Sotapatti Magga and have Nibbana as their object are called supramundane wisdom. This wisdom destroys the Anusaya plane of Sakkaya Ditti completely and dispels by way of an eradicating abandonment Samuchedda Pahana every vestige of wrong understanding and wrong thought together with the evil deeds Ducharita and wrong livelihood Dur Ajiva once and for all the old store accumulated by past evil kamma also disappears completely. Release is obtained from the apaya sansara, that is, rebirth in the lower worlds of misery. From this instance, the evils of wrong views and evil deeds do not make an appearance throughout the series of future existence and future world cycles. This kind of wisdom appears only during a Buddha sasana when the anatta bhavana exists. Hence, as beings have now encountered a Buddha Sasana, they should endeavor to attain this Anupanna Panya, a wisdom so far not arisen to them before they are bereft of this Sasana in future lives. This means that, starting with body contemplation, they should practice the Bodhipakya Dhamma until they reach the successful culmination of Anatta Bhavana. Those kinds of wisdom that have often appeared upanna in the past infinite sansara are the right understanding that beings are owners of or responsible for the actions kamma sakata samma ditti 
all kinds of mundane knowledge and wisdom on the level of the sense sphere kama vachara and such supranormal knowledges abhinya as the celestial eye dibba chakku and the celestial ear dibba sota that is clairvoyance and clairaudience when it was said that attempts must be made for the stability niyama of wisdom it must be understood that this mundane wisdom has likewise two planes namely stability and instability the mundane right understanding and right thoughts of aryas noble ones are established on the plane of stability niyama from the moment they are thus established in that stable wisdom and throughout the series of lives that follow until they attain parinibbana they will always be in the possession of the right understanding of ownership of kamma kamma sakata sammaditti of doctrinal knowledge pariyatti jnana knowledge of dhamma practice patipatti jnana and knowledge of four truths chatu satcha jnana the two fold mundane wisdom however with which worldlings puttujana are endowed is on the plane of instability aniyama in their wanderings throughout sansara these worldlings have sometimes been learned in the dhamma sometimes acquired fame through their learning sometimes they were great monks or great physicians while at other times they have also been cockles snails worms leeches lice bugs maggots ticks etc creatures that could be said to be just alive hence while now the opportunity of an encounter with the buddha sasana offers itself efforts must be made to transform unstable wisdom which is but temporary acquisition into stable wisdom in the way stated above this ends the detailed exposition of the two types of morality concentration and wisdom namely as arisen and not arisen with this background those laymen hermits and bhikkhus who have encountered a buddha sasana in this life who desire to rid themselves of evils in the future existences and who wish to consolidate in themselves permanently such dhammas as purification of virtue etc should practice appropriately the foundations of mindfulness satipatthana applying energy of the type of the right efforts sammapadhana in order to destroy the anusaya plane of personality belief if they desire to free themselves from the insane and wild mind such as is possessed by the madman the incapable boatman the man afflicted by hydrophobia and the sick man who vomits his medicine and desire to consolidate their concentration or transform it into a stable condition niyama so as to enable them to keep their attention tranquil steady and fixed at will on any subject of meditation kammathana they should practice appropriately the foundations of mindfulness with sammapadhana energy in order to destroy thereby the anusaya plane of personality belief if they desire to free themselves from doctrines and conditions of delusion sammoha dhamma which can cast them into utter darkness of the absence of wisdom which can extirpate all feelings of respect and reverence that they have harbored towards the infinite and noble qualities of the buddha the dhamma and the arya sangha as also of the establishments of the sasana leaving no trace in the existences that follow if they desire to rid themselves of the great wrong doctrines miccha dhamma that have led them in the past beginningless sansara to approach respect and pay reverence to all manners of spurious buddhas or religious teachers because as worldlings they were not in a position to know the true buddha the true dhamma and the true sangha if they desire to attain in the series of existences and world cycles beginning with the present that faith known as firmly established faith adigama sada and that wisdom known as firmly established wisdom adigama panya by virtue of which they can continue to evoke within themselves without let or hindrance respect and reverence for the true buddha the true dhamma and the true sangha and if they desire to transform them to the level of stability niyama then they must practice appropriately the foundations of mindfulness with sammapadana effort with a view of destroying personality belief on its plane of latent disposition anusaya bhumi here the appropriate practice of right effort sammapadana means that energy which is accompanied by the determination 
let the skin remain, let the bones remain, etc. Chapter 4 The Basis of Success Idipada I shall now give a brief description of the Idipadas, the basis of success. Idi The word explanation is Ijhanam Idi. This means the fact of having succeeded, completed, or perfected. In the Buddha Sasana, there are five Iddis. 1. Abhinya Yesu Dhammesu Abhinya Siddhi Completion of or success in acquiring special knowledge regarding those things in which special knowledge should be acquired. Things such as Rupa, material phenomena, Nama, mental phenomena. Second, Parineyesu Dhammesu Parinya Siddhi Completion of or success in acquiring full understanding in those things regarding which full understanding should be acquired. Things such as Dukkha, Satcha, the noble truth of suffering. Third, Pahata Besu Dhammesu Pahana Siddhi Completion of or success attained in the task of abandonment of those things that should be abandoned. Things such as Samudaya Satcha, the noble truth of the cause of suffering. Fourth, Satchi Kata Besu Dhammesu Satchi Kiriya Siddhi Completion of or success attained in the task of realization of those things that should be realized. Things such as Nirodha Satcha the noble truth of the cessation of suffering. Fifth, Bhaveta Besu Dhammesu Bhavana Siddhi Completion of or success attained in the task of development or cultivation of those things that should be developed or cultivated. Things such as Magga Satcha, the noble truth of the path leading to the cessation of suffering. These are the five essential Iddhis within a Buddha Sasana. Abhinya Siddhi means the completion of the task of knowledge of the Paramattha Dhammas, ultimate truths, which one had no knowledge of while one was beyond the pale of a Buddha Sasana. A thorough knowledge of the Abhidhammata Sangha, a summary of all the essential doctrines of the Abhidhamma, amounts to the Abhinya Siddhi, Parinya Siddhi means the completion of acquiring full understanding of Dukkha Satcha, the noble truth of suffering, either through a knowledge of their Lakhanna, characteristics, Rasa, functions, Pachupatthana, manifestations, and Paddhatthana, proximate causes, or through a knowledge of the three characteristics of impermanence, Dukkha and Anatta, which they possess. Pahana Siddhi means the completion of the task of abandoning Pahana, that is, destroying the Kilesas, defilements, which are Samudaya Satcha, the noble truth of the cause of suffering. In this book, since the main emphasis is placed on the attainment of the lowest class of Sotapannas, namely the Bonsin San Sotapannas, and not on the higher classes of Ariyas, noble ones, the completion of the task of destroying Sakkaya Ditti is Pahana Siddhi. The task of dispelling Vichikicca, skeptical doubt, is comprised within the task of destroying Sakkaya Ditti. Satchikiriya Siddhi means the completion of the task of realizing Nirodha Satcha, the noble truth of the cessation of suffering, both bodily and mentally. This task consist of the suppression and destruction of the kilesas, defilements. Bhavana Siddhi means the development of the three siddhas of sila, morality, samadhi, mental concentration, and panya, wisdom, until the attainment of lokuttara magga satcha, supramundane path leading to the cessation of suffering. Also, the seven purifications, beginning with morality and their subdivisions, constitute as many kinds of iddhis, in the sense of potencies in their respective fields. Idipada The word explanation is idhya 
Padu Idi Padu that is root or basis of attaining completion or perfection, success or potency. There are four kinds of Idipadas. They are one Chanditipada Chanda second Viriyadipada Viriya third Chittipado Chitta fourth Vimangsiddipada Vimangsa or Panya by Chanda is meant the zeal or desire to obtain, desire to attain, desire to reach, desire to fulfill, desire to accomplish. The desire indicated here is extreme or excessive desire. There is nothing within or without one's personality that can obstruct that desire. It is the kind of desire that evokes the thought, If I do not attain this accomplishment in this life, I shall not rest content. It is better that I die rather than that I shall not attain it. It is the kind of desire nurtured by King Dhamma Sonda of Banaras during the time of the Kasappa Buddha when the king said to himself What use is there in my being king of Banaras if I do not get the opportunity of hearing a discourse of the Kasappa Buddha? The king therefore relinquished his throne and went out in search of one who could repeat to him a discourse of the Kasappa Buddha, no matter that the discourse consisted of a short stanza only. Such desire is appeased if it is fulfilled, as in the case of King Bhimisara, Visakha and Anathapindika. It is only when there are faint indications that the desire can be attained but is not fulfilled that the mind becomes troubled and thoughts arise that it is better to die than to live without attaining the desire. Examples of such desire existed also in King Temiya, King Hatipala, and kings, nobles, and rich men in the time of the Buddha who discarded their palaces, retinues, and other luxuries to live the lives of bhikkhus in the Buddha Sasana. Virya means Sammapadana Virya together with its four characteristics see chapter 2 a person with this Virya is infused with the thought that the aim can be attained by energy and effort he is not discouraged even though it is said to him that he must undergo great hardships he is not discouraged even though he actually has to undergo great hardships he is not discouraged even though it is said to him that he must put forth effort for many days, months and years. He is not discouraged, even though he actually has to put forth effort for such long periods. Those who are weak in energy recoil from their task when confronted with work requiring great energy and effort. They shrink when told that they will have to stay apart from friends and associates. They shrink from the prospect of the necessity to be frugal in sleep and food. They shrink from the prospect of long periods of concentration. Chitta, literally consciousness, means attachment to iddhis when one comes in contact with the sasana and hears the dhamma. It is attachment that is extremely ardent and strong. Although one lives amidst the beauties and luxuries of the world, amidst acquired powers and fortunes, amidst the sacred books and the study of them. One is not allured, but one's mind is always turned towards Iddis. One attains satisfaction and tranquility only when one's mind is absorbed in matters connected with the Iddis. It is like the absorption of the alchemist engaged in the transmutation of the baser metals into gold or silver. Such an alchemist has no interest in anything else but his alchemy. He forgets to sleep or eat, or whether he had slept or eaten. He does not notice anything when out walking. Chitta is great absorption or attachment of this nature. Vimangsa, investigation, means knowledge or wisdom that can clearly perceive the greatness of the sufferings of hell and of the sufferings attendant on the round of rebirths. It is knowledge that can clearly perceive the advantages and benefits of the Iddis. 
it is knowledge that can dwell on the deep and difficult dhammas and on their nature. A person who possesses such knowledge can no longer find pleasure in any worldly pursuit except the pursuit of the iddhis. He finds gratification only in the acquisition of deep and profound iddhis. The deeper and more profound the dhammas, the greater is his desire to attain them. Those who are endowed with any one of these four bases of success, Iddipada, can no longer, during this life, admit or plead inability and remain without putting forth effort in the establishment of body contemplation, Kaya Gata Sati, and the higher stages of the sasana, such as the seven purifications, Visuddhi. It is only those who have never possessed any one of these bases of success and who cannot differentiate between the shallowness and profoundness of life, between superficiality and depth of the Dhamma, who admit or plead inability and remain without making any endeavor. A person endowed with any one of these four Idipadas can attain, according to his parami, the Iddis, until he reaches Lokuttara, supramundane Iddi either in this life or as a deva in the next life. The cases of those endowed with two or three or four idipadas need no lengthy explanation. In the cases of those persons who, far from possessing any of the idis, do not even possess any of the idipadas, they should attempt to acquire one or other of these bases. They admit or plead inability only because they have not the desire to acquire the higher benefits of the sasana, such as the satipatthanas. They should regard this very admission of inability as a highway to the lower worlds of misery, apaya loka. Thus, they should study, think and ponder over the suttanta discourses that can arouse zeal. They should approach a teacher who can arouse zeal and rely on him. Hence, did the Buddha say, Chanditti padang bhaveti, viriyiddhi padang bhaveti, chiddhi padang bhaveti, visang siddhi padang bhaveti. He cultivates zeal, energy, consciousness and investigation as the basis of success. Some persons, far from attaining the iddhis, do not even try to attain the iddhi padas. If they do not possess chanda, they do not even know that it is necessary to acquire such zeal. They are persons who admit and plead inability and defeat. The same is true in the cases of viriya, chitta and vimangsa. Steady application of the mind to kaya gata sati, studying the anecdotes conveying the sense of urgency, sangvega, applying oneself to the strict ascetic observances, dutanga, and such other practices of the Dhamma, is setting up of energy, virya. Applying oneself to profound subjects of Dhamma, such as the four great primaries, amounts to the setting up of vimangsa, investigation. If any one of these four bases of success is established, then it is certain that the respective iddhis will be attained according to one's parami. Hence it is stated in the commentaries that persons who do not possess any of the bases of success resemble the son of Chandhala, an outcast, while persons possessing one of the bases of success resemble the sons of an emperor. The sons of a Chandhala never even aim at becoming an emperor because they have no basis, no pada, for such an attainment. Sons of emperors, however, always aim at becoming emperors because they are endowed with the basis of attaining such an aim. Hence, wise persons of the present day should attempt to acquire the four iddipadas, the basis of success, so that they can destroy the great realm of personality belief and acquire within the sasana benefits of the higher attainments that can be obtained according to one's paramis.
Chapter 5 The Five Controlling Faculties Indriya The word explanation of the term Indriya is Indasa Kammang Indriyang This means the act of ruling or of controlling by rulers. The act of ruling by rulers means that whatever the ruler rules, nobody can go against him. In the present context, the control or rule that one exercises over one's mind is the essential point in these controlling faculties. These are the five faculties. First, Sadindriya, faith and confidence. Second, Vi Indriya, energy. Third, Sat Indriya, mindfulness. Fourth, Samadhi Indriya, concentration. Fifth, Pan Indriya, wisdom. Faith, Sad Indriya is to some extent synonymous with Sadha. But there are two kinds of Sadha, namely Pakati Sadha, ordinary faith, Bhavana Sadha, faith developed or matured by meditation. The faith and confidence, Sadha, that leads ordinary men and women to perform acts of alms giving, Dana, morality, Sila, and surrogate or rudimentary meditation, Bhavana, is called Ordinary faith, Pakati Sadda. Here, as was shown in the simile of the madman, chapter 2, although such Sadda is to some extent a controlling faculty, its control does not extend the capacity of controlling the unstable minds of ordinary folk in the work of meditation, Bhavna. Control is exercised over the instability only to the extent of leading to acts of almsgiving, morality and rudimentary meditation. Without faith and confidence, the mind never inclines to kusala kamma, wholesome, volitional actions. For ordinarily, it takes delight only in evil acts. This holds true also for the effort to attain to the purification of virtue, sila visuddhi or to engage in the study of the sacred text. This is how ordinary wholesome acts, Pakati Kusala Kamma, are produced by the control of ordinary faith which is undeveloped by genuine meditation, Abhavita. In the work of attending to a subject of meditation, Kammathana, for the practice of tranquility and insight, ordinary faith has not sufficient control over the mind, as the mind is apt to recoil and rebound from that faith and to turn elsewhere. In meditative work, ordinary faith is not sufficient. It is developed faith that prepares the seed bed, so to say, for the acquisition of great strength and power through the practice of meditation, such as mindfulness of breathing, in the context of the requisites of enlightenment, it is developed faith that is called Sad Indriya. The controlling faculty of faith in the field of meditative exercises, it represents the disappearance of unstable and oscillating attention and the appearance of a clear and steady mind. The mind's attention can be steadily fixed only on those objects which it finds clear and unbefogged. The practice of body contemplation, such as mindfulness of breathing, is the preparation of the seed bed for bhavana sadda, that is, faith and confidence developed and matured by meditation. If the mind is fixed on the contemplation of the body, such as the out and in breaths, it amounts to the attainment of developed faith. If then the work is continued in the field of tranquility and insight, the ability to destroy the three planes of personality belief can be acquired even within this life. The work of Samatha and Vipassana needs for their proper performance reliance on a teacher who is very learned in the Dhamma. Energy 
Viri Indriya is to some extent synonymous with Viriya, but there are two kinds or degrees of Viriya, namely Pakati Viriya, ordinary energy, Bhavna Viriya, energy developed by meditation. Another classification is Kaika Viriya, bodily energy, Chetasika Viriya, mental energy. Ordinary energy, Pakati Viriya, can be easily recognized. Persons who possess much ordinary energy in worldly matters can easily attain developed energy, Bhavna Viriya. The strict observances, Dhutanga, of a monk are instances of bodily energy of a developed nature, Kaika Bhavna Viriya. If, after setting up developed bodily energy, such as reducing sleep and being alert and energetic, there is still no mental energy, Chetasika Virya, such as enthusiasm in keen attention to meditation, Bhavna Manasikara. Then, steady application to or concentration on the subjects of meditation, Kamathana, such as mindfulness of breathing, cannot be attained, and the period of work is unduly lengthened without achieving clarity of mind and perception. Any kind of work will be properly and appropriately done only if the person performing it obtains quick mastery over it. It will be improperly done if the work obtains mastery over the person. By the work obtaining mastery over the person is meant that the work is done without real energy as a result of which no concrete results appear, and as days and months drag on, distaste of meditation and slackness in body postures appear, leading to sloth. With the appearance of sloth, progress in the work slows down, and with the slowing down of progress, further sloth develops. The idea then appears that it would be better to change the form of work. Thus constant changes in forms of work occur and in that way the work obtains mastery over the person lacking energy. In meditative work, quick success is obtained only by one endowed with both bodily and mental energy. From the moment when body contemplation is set up, the energy that develops day by day is bhavna virya, energy developed by meditation. And it is this energy that, in Bodhipakhya Dhammas, is called faculty of energy, Viri Indriya. It represents the disappearance of sloth and laziness in meditative work and the appearance of enthusiasm and vigor. The mind takes delight in dwelling on objects on which the attention is strong. Thence, the task of setting up developed energy and graded development is identical with that of faculty of faith. Sad Indriya. The faculty of mindfulness, Sat Indriya, in the context of the Bodhipakya Dhammas, means the setting up of mindful body contemplation, Kayagata Sati, example, on out and in breath, and the development of Bhavana Sati, meditative mindfulness, called Sati Patthana, until supramundane, right mindfulness. Lokuttara Sammasati as a supramundane path factor is reached. The faculties of concentration and wisdom Samad Indriya and Panindriya may be defined and described similarly. The faculty of concentration dispels the distraction of mind when it is applied in the work of Satipatthana on such an object as mindfulness on breathing. The faculty of wisdom dispels confusion and haziness. The faculty of faith, energy and mindfulness, which precede those of concentration and wisdom, are like those who raise a king to kingship. They raise the latter two faculties until the topmost excellence is attained. After the setting up of body contemplation and the attainment of mastery over one's mind, if the Samatha road is taken, 
the faculty of concentration becomes the eight meditative attainments, sammapati or jhana, while the faculty of wisdom becomes the five higher spiritual knowledges, abhinya, such as the supernormal powers, etc. If the vipassana road is taken, the faculty of concentration becomes the voidness concentration, sunyatta samadhi, conditionless concentration, animitta samadhi, or desireless concentration, appannihita samadhi, while the faculty of wisdom becomes the five purifications, visuddhi, pertaining to wisdom, the knowledge of the three contemplations, anupassana jnana, the ten inside knowledges, vipassana jnana, and knowledges pertaining to the four paths and the four fruitions and nineteen of reviewing pachave khanna jnana. This shows how the five faculties occur together. The predominance of the faculties. It is now proposed to show where each of these faculties forms a predominant factor. The Sutta text says, Katha Saddindriyang Dathabang Chatusu Sota Patiyangesu Etha Saddindriyang Dathabang. Where should one look for the faculty of faith? One should look for it in four constituents of stream entry. This means that the faculty of faith predominates in the four constituents of stream entry. These four are unshakable faith in the noble qualities of the Buddha, such as Arahang, Samma, Sambuddho, etc. Second, unshakable faith in the noble qualities of the Dhamma, such as well proclaimed Savakatto. Third, unshakable faith in the noble qualities of the Sangha, such as of good conduct, Supatipanno, etc. Fourth, completely or perfectly endowed with the foundation or proximate cause, Padatthana of supramundane concentration, Lokuttara, Samadhi which is purification of morality, sila visuddhi. These are the four factors that ensure the attainment of sotapatti magganyana, knowledge pertaining to the path of stream entry, within the compass of this life. In the sutta passage, buddhe avecha pasadena samanagato avecha pasado means unshakable faith. It is the faith, Saddha, of those who have attained access, concentration, Upachara Samadhi, while reflecting on the noble qualities of the Buddha. Upachara Samadhi here means steady and fixed attention achieved while reflecting on the noble qualities of the Buddha. When one encounters such steady and fixed attention, one must know that the control by faith is predominant. Such a person is one who attains mastery over his mind in the matter of faith, in the noble qualities of the Buddha. The same holds true in regard to the noble qualities of the Dhamma and Sangha. Foundation of Supramundane Concentration The fourth constituent of stream entry means the permanent morality ending with right livelihood as the eighth precept, Ajivattamakka Nichasila, which can enable one to attain supramundane concentration in this very life. When that sila is unbroken and pure, it is free from the defilements of tanha, mana, conceit, and ditti, wrong view, and in such case, one must understand that Sadha is prominent in that Sila. Inability to observe the requirements of the Sila is called breaking it. Although the Sila may be technically unbroken, if it is observed amidst ordinary worldly conditions, 
it is said to be impure. In accordance with the saying, the worth of a bull can be known only on the ascent from the bed of a stream to the banks. Lay persons and bhikkhus who profess to be followers of the Buddha can know whether or not the turbulence and distractions latent in their minds have disappeared. That is, whether or not they have attained mastery over their minds. Only when they arrive at these four constituents Katha Virindriyanang Tathabang Chatusu Samma Padhanesu Etha Virindriyanang Tathabang Where should one look for the faculty of energy? One should look for it in the four constituents of right effort. Lay persons and bhikkhus who profess to be followers of the Buddha can know whether or not the unsettledness and turbulence of their minds in the matter of virya have disappeared and whether or not they are thus persons who have attained mastery over their minds only when they come to the four constituents of samma pardhana right effort let my skin remain let my sinews remain let my bones remain let my blood dry up i shall not rest until the realm of personality belief sakkaya ditti the realm of the ducharitas and the apaya sansara that are in my personality are destroyed in this life. This is the singleness of determination and effort in Sammapadana. It is the effort of the same order as that exerted by the venerable Chakkupalas. When one encounters such determination and effort, one must recognize it in the predominating control of virya over the mind. In the matter of virya, the unsettledness and turbulence of the mind have disappeared in such a person and he is one within the Buddha Sasana who has obtained mastery over his mind. Katha sat indriyang dattabang chatusu sati patane su etha sat indriyang dattabang Where should one look for the faculty of mindfulness? One should look for it in the four foundations of mindfulness. Lay persons and bhikkhus who profess to be followers of the Buddha can know whether or not the unsettledness and turbulence of their minds in the matter of sati, mindfulness, have disappeared and whether or not they are thus persons who have obtained mastery over their minds only when they arrive at the four constituents of the sati patthana. If the attention can be kept fixed on any part of the body such as out-breath and in breath, by the successful practice of mindful body contemplation, kaya gata sati, for as long as is desired, then it must be recognized as the control exercised by mindfulness, sati. The unsettledness and turbulence of the mind of such a person have disappeared. He is one who has obtained mastery over his mind. Katha Sama indriyang dattabang chatusu jhanesu etha sama indriyang dattabang Where should one look for the faculty of concentration? One should look for it in the four jhanas. If in the work of samatha, such as out-breath and in-breath, at least the successful accomplishment of upachara samadhi bhavna contemplation of access concentration is attained and if thereby nivaranyas hindrances such as kama chanda sensuous desire vyapada ill will which in the past sangsara have continuously been running riot in the mind are removed the attention of the mind on the objects of samatha becomes specially steady and tranquil this should be recognized as arising out of the function of the predominant control exercised by samadhi. The unsettledness and disturbances of the mind in the matter of samadhi have disappeared from such an individual. He is one who has obtained mastery over his mind. Katha panindriyanang dathabang chatusu arya satchesu etha panindriyanam Dattabang. 
where should one look for the faculty of wisdom? One should look for it in the four noble truths. Among persons who encounter a Buddha sasana, knowledge of the four noble truths is of supreme value. Only when this knowledge is acquired can they obtain release from the realm of Sakkaya Ditti and that of the Ducharitas and from the Apara Sangsara. Hence, in order to acquire knowledge of the four noble truths, they should at least attempt to obtain insight into the six dhatus or basic constituent elements of Pathavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo, Akasha and Vinyana or insight into their fleeting and unstable nature. How they do not last for more than the twinkling of an eye at a time, so to say, and how they are continually being destroyed. They should attain to such insight through such method of practice as studying, memorizing, reciting, reflecting, listening, discussing, questioning, practicing, inside exercises and contemplating. If a clear insight is obtained into these six elements, there is no necessity for special practice with regard to the remaining dhammas. If the nature of anicca, impermanence, can be clearly realized, the realization of anatta, impersonality, follows as a matter of course. The realization of the nature of dukkha, suffering, can be accomplished in its entirety only when one attains the stage of arahatta phala, fruition of holiness. Thus, after putting forth effort for lengthy periods, when insight is obtained into the nature of the six elements, both within and without oneself, as well as into the nature of the impermanence, fixed attention on them is achieved. This must be recognized as arising out of the predominant control exercised by Panya. The unreliability that has been a feature of one's mind throughout past infinite samsara gradually disappears. Here, unreliability of one's mind means the perception of permanency in things that are impermanent, of happiness in suffering, of pleasantness in loathsomeness, of self in non-self of individuals in non-individuals, of beings in non-beings, of humans in non-humans, of devas, sakha and brahmas in non-devas, non-sakha and non-brahmas, of women, men, bullocks, buffaloes, elephants, horses, in non-women, non-men, non-bullocks, non-buffaloes, non-elephants and non-horses. Freedom from unreliability means perceiving the true reality after having obtained mastery over the mind within the Buddha Sasana. If Dukkha Satcha or the noble truth of suffering be clearly perceived, it follows as a matter of course that the other three truths can also be clearly perceived. In the perception of these four truths, the way the worldlings perceive them is known as theoretical knowledge, anubodha, while the way the noble, ariya, stream enterers, etc., is known as penetrative understanding, pativeda. Theoretical knowledge is like seeing a light at night, but not the fire from which it originates. Although the fire cannot be directly seen, by seeing the reflected light, one can know without doubt that there is a fire. Seeing the fire directly is like Pativeda, the penetrative understanding. Sad Indriyang Bhaveti, Viri Indriyang Bhaveti, Sat Indriyang Bhaveti, Sama Indriyang Bhaveti, Panin Indriyang Bhaveti. The meaning of this Pali passage uttered by the Buddha is that the five Indriyas, mental faculties, should be practiced and developed in order to facilitate the great work of Samatha and Vipassana. A person who has not developed these five Indriyas is like a country without a ruler or king. It is like the forests and mountains inhabited by wild tribes 
where no administration exists. In the rulerless country, there is no law. There, the people are unrestrained, like animals, the strong prey on the weak. In the same way, the mind of a person who has not developed the five indriyas is distracted and runs riot with defilements. Just as a person possessed by evil spirits cannot bear to hear the sound of such recitations as itipiso or hetu pacheyo, when persons without developed indriyas hear talk connected with the cause of contentment, pacheya santosha, or with the practice of mental development, bhavana rambha, they quickly discover antagonistic criticisms. In them, the desire to exert themselves in the work of samatha and vipassana never arises. On the other hand, a person who develops the five indriyas resembles a country ruled by a just and lawful king. It resembles the towns and hamlets of the Majjima Desa, central region, where governmental administration exists. Such a person is not disturbed by the variegated theories of various persons. He is confirmed in the sole way of the Buddha's teachings. When such a person hears talk connected with the cause of contentment or the practice of mental development, his mind is clear and cool. He is confirmed in the desire to exert himself in the work of Samatha and Vipassana. In this way, the arising of the two kinds of desires in this world is not the work of beings or individuals, but depends on the existence or otherwise of development of the five Indriyas. If there is no development of the Indriyas, one kind of desire arises. If there is development of the Indriyas, that desire disappears and a new kind of desire invariably appears. The more the development of the Indriyas proceeds, the more does this new desire increase and gather strength. When all the five Indriyas are set up, the desire for the paths and the truths will immediately appear. Thus must beings develop the five Indriyas in order to raise them from their ordinary level, Pakati Saddha, etc., to the great heights of their developed or meditative plane, bhavana, saddha, etc. Chapter 6 The Five Mental Powers Bala The mental powers Balani are thus called because they overpower opposing mental states or, as the commentaries explain, they are powerful in the sense of being unshaken, akampa nathena, by opposition. Parallel to the five faculties, there are five powers, bala. First, saddha, faith. Second, virya, energy. Third, sati, mindfulness. Fourth, samadhi, concentration. Fifth, panya. Wisdom. They are like five generals or commanders engaged in destroying the hostile kingdom of personality belief. They are the fivefold strength on which bhikkhus and lay folk can place their reliance. As is the case of the faculties, the power of faith, Saddabala, is of two kinds the power of ordinary faith, Pakati Saddha, and two the power of developed faith, bhavana saddha. Ordinary faith, which has no development through specific practice, associates with tanaha, according to circumstances, and can thus produce only the ordinary good actions, pakatikasula kamma, of generosity or liberality, dana, morality, sila, etc., the limited measure of strength it possesses cannot overcome craving. On the contrary, Tanaha keeps ordinary faith under its power. The Pali text mentioned with the great clarity for by traditional practices of the noble ones, Ariya Vangsa. 
they are being easily satisfied with food being easily satisfied with clothing being easily satisfied with any dwelling place finding pleasure and enjoyment in the work of bhavana meditation they constitute the realm of sadha in the present day world this great kingdom of sadha lies hidden and submerged today beings take pleasure and enjoyment in material things pachaya misa they take pleasure and enjoyment in worldly rank dignity and honor loka misa they take pleasure and enjoyment in the attainment of the pleasant life in worldly riches and in power and dominion what tamisa and thus is the great kingdom of tanha established as clearly as the great ocean round the island this shows the weakness of ordinary faith pakati sadha in this world it is developed faith which having its genesis in successful practice of body contemplation such as mindfulness of breathing and being pursued until the disappearance of the distraction and unsettled condition of the mind can dispel the craving which takes pleasure and enjoyment in the aforementioned three kinds of worldliness amisa it is this developed faith bhavana sadda that can save bhikkhus and lay folk who are in the course of being drowned and submerged in the ocean of the three cravings and that enables them to reach the island haven of the kingdom of sadda as manifested example in the four traditional practices of the noble ones ariya vamsa dhamma in the context of the bodhi pakhiya dhamma it is this developed faith that should be acquired of the two kinds of energy virya ordinary energy which is without development practice is associated with laziness kosajja according to the occasion and produces the ordinary good acts pakati kusala kamma of liberality or generosity morality the study of sacred texts etc this ordinary energy cannot dispel laziness on the contrary it is laziness which controls ordinary energy and keeps it under subjection when beings encounter a buddha sasana they acquire the knowledge that in the past unfathomable samsara they have been the king folk of sakkaya ditti of evil deeds du charita and the inhabitants of the lower worlds of misery apaya loka the pali text clearly prescribe the method of arya vamsa the traditional practice of the noble ones as a way of dispelling laziness and the fourth of them delight in meditation should be practiced until release from such a state of laziness being faith's opposite is attained the way of dispelling laziness may be thus described in the case of a monk having equipped himself with the sikhas the training rules which are the buddha's heritage which he has committed himself to in the ordination hall at the time of his becoming a bhikkhu he makes the trees and bushes of the forest his dwelling place lives only on arms food gathered on his arms round avoids company observes the dutanga and applies himself scrupulously to mindful body contemplation these are the acts of energy that dispel the unwholesome volitional actions akusala kamma arising out of laziness kosajja they are acts comprised in the realm of energy this realm of energy remains obscure and is unknown in the present day world today although bhikkhus are aware that they belong to that class of being still possessed of personality belief and evil deeds and liable to rebirth in lower worlds of misery yet they live permanently in dwellings constructed in towns and villages by their donors 
They take pleasure in the receipt of large gifts and benefits. They are unable to dispense with the company of other people, etc. All of which acts are comprised within the realm of laziness, Kosaja. And this realm of laziness is as conspicuous as the sea that inundates an island. This shows the weakness of ordinary energy, Pakativirya. It is only developed energy, Bhavanavirya, such as being satisfied with a minimum of sleep, being always alert and active, being fearless, being bold and firm in living alone, being steadfast in meditative practice, that can dispel laziness. In the context of the Bodhipakya Dhamma, it is this developed energy that should be acquired. The detailed meaning of the powers of mindfulness, concentration and wisdom may be known by following the lines of explanation given above. Next, I shall just give a more concise explanation. The antithesis of mindfulness, Sati, is Muttasatcha, confused mindfulness or absent-mindedness. It means inability to become absorbed in the work of tranquility, meditation, samatha bhavna, or of insight meditation, vipassana bhavna. Inability to concentrate and to control one's mind, the wandering of thoughts to objects other than the object of concentration. Ordinary mindfulness that one possesses in a rudimentary state from birth cannot dispel the absent-mindedness. Only developed mindfulness can do it. The antithesis of concentration, samadhi, is distraction, vikkhepa, of mind, that is, wandering thoughts and idle fancies. It is the inability to concentrate, to control the mind and keep its attention fixed on one object. It is the arising of thoughts on objects other than the object of concentration. It is the unquiet and restless state of mind when applying itself to the work of meditation. Ordinary concentration cannot dispel the unwholesome state of distraction. Only developed concentration, Bhavna Samadhi can do it. The antithesis of wisdom, Panya, is delusion. Some moha. It is ignorance, lack of clarity, vagueness, and absence of lucidity of mind. It is the darkness shrouding the mind. This delusion cannot be removed by ordinary wisdom, pakati panya, or by erudition, pariyati panya, even if that comprises knowledge of the whole tipitaka. It is only wisdom developed by meditation. Bhavna Panya that has set up mindful body contemplation which can gradually dispel delusion. This shows the meaning of the five unwholesome opposites Patipakha, Erkusula, Dhamma coupled with the respective powers Bala. These five unwholesome opposing forces are Tanaha, laziness, Kosajja or inability to take pains lassitude or lack of fearlessness in dhamma practice patipati third absent mindedness muttasaccha fourth distraction vikkhepa and fifth delusion sammoha the five things that can counteract and dispel them are called powers bala if any one of these powers is weak and unable to dispel the respective opposite, then meditation, be it tranquility or insight, cannot be very successful as far as naya individuals are concerned, that is, those in need of guidance. Hence, at the present day, some persons can emerge out of the realm of Tanaha because of the strength of their power of faith, Saddabala. They are rid of attachment to material things and to worldly dignities and honors. But as they are deficient in the other four powers, they are unable to rise above the stage of contentment, santutthi, with their living conditions. 
some persons can emerge out of the realm of craving and laziness because they are strong in the powers of faith and energy. They are constant in keeping to a life of contentment and, if monks, firm in keeping to forest and hill dwellings and in the observance of the Dutanga as exemplifying their energy. But as they are weak in the other three powers, they are unable to practice mindful body contemplation or do the work of tranquility and insight meditation. Some persons again are strong in the first three powers and thus can rise up to the work of mindful body contemplation, kaya gata sati, achieving concentration, example, on out and in breath, or in contemplating the bones of the body, but being deficient in the other two powers, they cannot rise up to the task of jhana and insight. Other persons can achieve the attainment of jhana because they are strong in the first four powers, but as the power of wisdom is weak in them, they cannot rise to the work of insight. Some persons are strong in the power of wisdom as far as their learning in Dhamma and Tipitaka is concerned. They are also wise in understanding the teachings on the ultimate realities, Paramattha Dhamma, but because they lack the backing of the other four powers they cannot emerge from the realm of craving, lassitude, absent-mindedness and distraction. They live and die within the confines of those unwholesome states. In this way, whenever one is deficient in any one of the powers, one cannot rise above the realm of the respective opposite force. Of the five powers, those of energy and wisdom are also called iddipadas, bases of spiritual success. Hence, if these two powers are strong and coordinated, it does not happen that one cannot rise up to the work of insight, vipassana, because of the weakness of the other three powers. People who do not know the function of the bases of success, the controlling faculties, indriya, and the powers, bala, do not know why their zeal is weak and which are the opposing forces, patipakha, that assail them. They do not know the qualities of mind which they have to cultivate and hence the desire to cultivate them never arises. It is thus that the traditional practices of the noble ones, Ariyavangsa, are on the verge of disappearing at the present day. I shall give an illustration. There is a species of bull called Usabha. It is a bull worth more than a thousand ordinary bulls. If the characteristics and distinctive signs of that bull be recognized and it be reared and nurtured properly, its limbs and marks will develop and its strength and powers will increase. It can then guard even a hundred cattle pens from the incursion of lions and leopards. If the owner of such a bull is ignorant of its potential, and if thus he does not rear and nurture it properly, but keeps and tends it just as he would any other ordinary bull, if he employs it in ploughing and drawing carts in company with other bulls, then its distinctive marks and limbs will fail to develop, and its strength and powers will remain dormant. It will thus live and die just like any other bull. A knowing owner, however, will separate such a bull from the rest and keep it in a specially constructed shed. He will cover the floor of the shed with clean sand and will fix a ceiling to the roof. He will keep the shed clean and will feed the bull with paddy and pulses fit for human consumption. He will wash and bathe it. In such a case, the distinctive marks and limbs will develop and its strength and powers will increase enormously. In this Buddha Sasana, Neya individuals requiring guidance resemble the owner of the bull. The five powers of this Neya individuals resemble the Usabha bull, the Satipatthana Vibhanga, Sammapadhana Vibhanga, Idipada Vibhanga, Indriya Vibhanga, Bhojanga Vibhanga, and Magganya Vibhanga 
of the Abhidhamma Pitaka and the Mahasati Patana Sutta, Sati Patana Samyutta, Indriya Samyutta, Bala Samyutta, and Bojanga Samyutta of the Sutta Pitaka resemble the expository books which expound the distinctive signs, marks, and characteristics of the Usabba bull. The methods of how such bulls are to be reared and taken care of and the strength and powers that such bulls can attain if reared and nurtured properly. Those Naya individuals who through ignorance do not attempt to develop the five powers through the work of meditation and who thus remain satisfied with the lower attainments within the sasana, such as dana, sila and study of scriptures, pariyatti, resemble the ignorant owner of an usabba bull who does not rear and nurture it properly. In this world, there are many kinds of worldly undertakings. There are undertakings that can be accomplished by the strength of wealth and there are undertakings that can be accomplished by the strength of knowledge. Even in the case of the cultivation of land, several kinds of strength are needed for its accomplishment. Sometimes the strength of wealth has to be gathered first and at other times the strength of knowledge. Preparatory education and study constitute the gathering and strength of knowledge. Similarly, in the Buddha Sasana, there are five powers needed for the work of Samatha, Vipassana and the attainment of the holy paths and fruits of Nibbana. It is only when these powers are first brought together that the great works mentioned can be undertaken. Those persons who do not possess even one of the five powers cannot evoke a desire to undertake these great tasks. It does not occur to them that these great tasks can be accomplished in this life. They live forgetfully and without determination. If it is pointed out to them that the task can be accomplished, they do not wish to hear it. They do not know that such untoward thoughts occur to them because they are utterly impoverished in their spiritual powers. They lay the blame at the door of Parami or Dvihetuka or at the unfavorable times. If, however, these people set up work in one of the Sati Patthana, such as the Anapana Sati, and if thereby they set up the three powers of Sadda, Viriya and Sati, such untoward thoughts will certainly disappear. It is inevitable that new wholesome thoughts must arise. This is because they have developed their strength. This is how the strength is developed. Although such a person cannot as yet attain an insight into body and mind, the weak faith grows through the controlled, exercised over craving of material wants, pachayamisa, and worldly achievements, lokamisa. The weak energy grows through control of lassitude. Weak mindfulness grows through control of absent-mindedness. Concentration and wisdom too gather strength through the control of distraction and delusion. When these powers grow, it is inevitable that there must be a change in the mind of the meditator. A person who is afflicted with a major disease has no desire to take an interest in the ordinary affairs and activities of the world. But if after taking proper medicine and treatment, his grave illness is gradually cured, and he is aroused from his apathy, it is inevitable that he will again take interest in normal activities. Here, the five unwholesome opposing forces, that is craving, lassitude, etc., resemble major diseases. The work of tranquility and inside meditation resembles the affairs and activities of the world. Work in the field of Satipatthana, such as mindfulness of breathing, resembles the proper medicines and treatment taken. The rest of this comparison can be easily understood. Hence, did the Buddha say, he develops the powers of faith, energy, mindfulness, concentration and wisdom, Sadda Balang Bhaveti. In this world, the strength of builders lies in good tools, such as awls, chisels, axes, knives, saws, etc. 
Only when equipped with such tools can they undertake to build. Similarly, in the sasana, the tools of tranquility and insight, meditation, samatha and vipassana, for achieving the knowledge of the paths and fruitions of sainthood, magga and phalanyana, consist of developed faith, developed energy, developed mindfulness, developed concentration and developed wisdom, bhavana, sadda, etc., which are developed through one of the satipatthanas, such as mindfulness of breathing. These five powers are the strength of meditators, yoga, vachara. Hence, these five powers must be developed in order to undertake successfully the work of tranquility and insight meditation within the Buddha Sasana. This is the meaning of the word Bhaveti. He develops in the text quoted above. Chapter 7 The Seven Factors of Enlightenment Pojanga Chattu Satcha Dhamme Suttu Bhujjati Ti Sambodhi Sambodhiya Ango Sambhojango The word explanation given above means because Sambodhi fully awakens to the four truths. Therefore, it is called awakenment or enlightenment. Sambodhi signifies here the knowledge of the supramundane path Lokuttara Magganyana. A constituent of such path knowledge is called a factor of enlightenment. Birds are first delivered from their mother's wombs in the form of eggs. By breaking through the shells, they are then delivered for a second time. Finally, when they become fully fledged with feathers and wings, they are delivered from their nest and can fly wherever they please. Similarly, in the case of meditators, they are first delivered from the distractions of mind which have accompanied them throughout beginningless sansara successfully setting up mindful body contemplation or by accomplishing the work of tranquility meditation. Secondly, when they attain insight, vipassana, into body, mind, aggregates, rupa, nama, khanda, etc., they are free from coarse forms of ignorance. Finally, when the seven factors of enlightenment, pojanga, develop and mature, they become fully fledged by attaining the knowledge of the supramundane path, Lokuttara Magganyana, called Sambodhi, and thus they are delivered from the state of worldlings, Puttujana, attaining the state of Arya, that is, of the supramundane Lokuttara or Nibbana. There are seven Bhojangas, or the factors of enlightenment. Sati Sambhojanga, mindfulness. Dhamma Vichaya Sambhojanga Investigation of Dhamma Viriya Sambhojanga Energy Piti Sambhojanga Joy Pasaddi Sambhojanga Tranquility Samadhi Sambhojanga Concentration Upekka Sambhojanga Equanimity The mental factor mindfulness Sati Chetasika called diversely Sati Pathana, Sati Indriya, Sati Bala, Samma Sati, Magganga. This is Sati Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor, mindfulness. The mental factor, wisdom, Panya Chetasika, diversely called Vimang Siddhi Pada, Panyan Indriya, Panya Bala, Samma Ditti Magganga. All Adhamma Vichya, Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor, investigation of Dhamma. Alternatively, the five purification pertaining to wisdom, the knowledge of the three contemplations, the ten insight knowledges are also called Dhamma Vichya Sambhojanga. Just as cotton seeds are milled, carded, etc., so as to produce cotton wool. The process of repeatedly viewing the five aggregates khanda in the light of vipassana jnana, inside knowledge, is called 
Thamma Vichaya Sambhojanga, the Enlightenment Factor, Investigation of Dhamma. The Mental Factor, Energy, Virya Chetasika, called diversely Samma Padana, Viriddhi Pada, Virindriya, Viriya Bala, and Samma Vayama, Magganga. These are Virya Sambhojanga, the Enlightenment Factor, Energy. The joy and happiness that appears when the process of truly seeing and knowing increases by the practice of Satipatthana, example, by mindful body contemplation, is called Piti Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor, joy. The process of becoming calm and tranquil in both body and mind, when the mental distractions, reflections and thoughts a bait is called Pasaddhi Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor, tranquility. It is a mental factor, Chetasika, of tranquility of body and of mind, Kaya Pasaddhi Chitta Pasaddhi. The factors pertaining to concentration called Samma Indriya, Samadhi Bala, Samma Samadhi Magganga, are Samadhi Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor, concentration. Alternatively, preliminary access and full concentration or the eight jhanas associated with the work of tranquility, samatha, and purification of mind, chitta visuddhi, and voidness, concentration, sunyata, samadhi, etc., associated with the purifications pertaining to wisdom, are also called samadhi, sambhojanga. The concentration that accompanies inside knowledge, vipassana jnana, or the knowledge of the paths and fruitions is called voidness concentration, sunyata samadhi, conditionless concentration, animitta samadhi, and desireless concentration, apannihita samadhi. When work on the subject of meditation, kamatthana, is not yet methodical or systematic, much effort has to be exercised both bodily and mentally. But when the work becomes methodical and systematic, one is freed from such effort. This freedom is called Tatra Majatta Tata Chetasika, the mental factor of equipoise, and that is Upeka Sambhojanga, the enlightenment factor of equanimity. When a meditator becomes endowed with these seven characteristics of Sambodhi equally, he enjoys the happiness and joy of a monk, Samana, in the Buddha Sasana, a happiness and joy unequaled and unparalleled by any worldly pleasure. Thus it is said in the Dhammapada, The bhikkhu who has retired to a lonely abode and has calmed his mind, experiences joy transcending that of men, as he clearly perceives the Dhamma. Whenever he reflects on the rise and fall of the aggregates, he experiences joy and happiness. To those who know, that reflection is the deathless. Verses 373-374 There are texts and stories wherein it is related that ailments and major diseases have been cured by the mere listening to the recitation of these seven factors of enlightenment. But these ailments and diseases can be cured only when the listeners are fully aware of the meaning of these factors and great and clear saddha, faith, arises in them. When these seven factors of enlightenment are acquired in a balanced manner, the meditator can rest assured that there will be no deficiency in his mindfulness directed to the body, kāyāgata sati, no deficiency in his perception of impermanence and not self nor in his mental and bodily energy, virya. Because his mind is set at rest in regard to these three factors, sati, dhamma vichya, virya, he experiences joy, piti, in the knowledge that he can now perceive the light of Nibbana, which has never appeared to him in the beginningless, 
past sansara, not even in his dreams, because of the joy and ease, sukha, of mind, his application to the kamatthana objects becomes calm and steady, pasaddi, and equanimity, upekha, arises, which is free from the anxieties and efforts of mindfulness, sati, perception of anicca and anatta, dhamma vichya, and the necessity to rouse energy, virya. All the above statements are made with reference to the stage at which the factors of enlightenment are in unison with one another and their respective functions are well performed. But even at the stage of ordinary practice, from the moment mindfulness directed to the body is set up, qualities such as mindfulness are known as bhojangas, factors of enlightenment. The enlightened one has said, in the Bhojanga Samyutta. Sati Sambhojangam Bhaveti Vivekani Sittam Viragani Sittam Nirodhani Sittam Usagga Parinaming Dhamma Vichya Sambhojangam Upekha Sambhojangam Bhaveti Vivekani Si Sittam Viragani Si Sittam Nirodhani Si Sittam Usagga Parinaming he develops the enlightenment factors, mindfulness, equanimity, dependent on detachment, on absence of lust, on cessation, and culminating in relinquishment. This means that in the ordinary course referred to by the words he develops, the process of setting up mindful body contemplation amounts to the setting up of the seven factors of enlightenment. The distinctive and higher cultivation of them is indicated by the words dependent on detachment. The meaning of the Pali passage quoted above is one should practice the enlightenment factors, mindfulness, etc. This is dependent on the absence of all other activities and anxieties, on the absence of lust and greed, of the suffering attendant upon the round of rebirths, and on the relinquishment of the four substrata of existence, upadhi. Chapter 8 The Eight Path Factors Maganga The eight factors or constituents of the path are 1. Right View Sammaditti 2. Right Thought Samma Sankappa 3. Right Speech Samma Vacha 4. Right Action Samma Kamanta 5. Right Livelihood Samma Ajiva 6. Right Effort Samma Vayama 7. Right Mindfulness Samma Sati 8. Right Concentration Samma Samadhi all these eight part factors are present in the supramundane purification by knowledge and vision. Lokuttara Jnana Dasanna Visuddhi In the preceding mundane purifications, right speech, right action and right livelihood are present only in the purification of virtue, Sila Visuddhi. They are not present in purification of mind, Chitta Visuddhi and the rest. Morality, Sila. Hence, in the context of requisites of enlightenment, purification of virtue, Sila Visuddhi, is by nature dependent on detachment, Viveka Nisitta, etc. In accordance with the following text from the Maganga Vibhanga, he develops right speech dependent on detachment, dependent on absence of lust, dependent on cessation, culminating in relinquishment. He develops right action, right livelihood, dependent on detachment. It does not refer to virtue, sila, that has leanings towards happy forms of existence, bhava sampatti, and depends on the round of rebirths, vattanisitta. 
Tasila Visuddhi of those who have consciously given up attempts at attaining the holy paths and fruits in this life is not genuine. Abhi Brahmacharya ka sila, virtue belonging to the essence of the holy life, and thus is not of the genuine Bodhipakhya class. If effort be made, however, towards the attainment of Nibbana in the next life, it can be Parami sila, which is part of Vivattanisitta sila, virtue tending towards the ending of the round of rebirths. The path factors of right speech, right action and right livelihood are purely of the class of morality, Sila Khanda, and hence constitute genuine perfection of virtue. They are also called the three Virati Chetasika, mental factors of vocal and bodily abstention. Right thought, Samma Sankappa, is the mental factor, thought conception, Vitakka Chetasika. As it is the harbinger of wisdom, it is included in the wisdom category Panya Khanda of the Eightfold Path. It is threefold, namely thoughts of renunciation, of non hate and non harming, Nekhamma, Abhyapada, and Avihimsa Sankappa. Just as a person incarcerated in prison or besieged by enemy troops, or encircled by forest fire, or as a fish caught in a net, tank or trap, or a bird caught in a cage, will be absorbed without being able to sleep or eat, in the one thought of how to escape from these confinements. So are the attempts of persons who contrive with energy of the Sammapadana types to escape from the confinement of the old and infinitely numerous, unwholesome Kamma arisen in the past, Upanna Urkusula Kamma, and the new infinitely numerous unwholesome Kamma not yet arisen, Anupanna Urkusula Kamma, that is due to arise in the future. The thoughts of such a person are the path factor, thoughts of renunciation, Nekamma Sankappa Magganna. It is a sort of thoughts which look for the way to escape from the sufferings of the round of rebirths, Vatta Dukkha. The thought that associates with Metta Jhana is called Abhyapada Sankappa, the thought of non-hate. If associated with Karuna Jhana, it is called Avihingsa Sankappa, the thought of non-harming. The thought that associates with the remaining Jhanas is called thought of renunciation. The four path factors of right view, right effort, right mindfulness and right concentration have been dealt with in the chapter on the enlightenment factors. The Ajivata Makasila that is taken and observed with the purpose of destroying the great kingdom of Ditti Anusaya, proclivity to wrong views, belongs to the path factors of the mundane morality category. Lokiya Sila Khanda Magganna. It is also purification of virtue. That eightfold virtue ending with right livelihood, Ajivatamaka Sila, is twofold for lay folk and for monks. Abstention from the threefold evil conduct in deeds, Kaya Ducharita, and fourfold in words, Vachi Ducharita, comprise that virtue for lay folks. The eight or ten precepts are refinements of that virtue. For monks, that virtue is constituted by the observance of the 227 Vinaya rules which cover bodily and vocal kamma. The remaining rules laid down in the Vinaya Pitaka are refinements of it. Just as trees grow in the soil, so the last six purification beginning with purification of mind develop in the soil of the first, the purification of virtue, Sila Visuddhi. In particular, the purification of virtue does not mix with the five middle mundane purifications, but supports them by securing antecedent purity. In the case of the seventh purification, 
the supramundane purification of knowledge and vision. The purification of virtue operates in conjunction with it. Being identical with the three constituents of the morality group, Sila Khanda, of the supramundane eightfold path. The reason is that, in the case of the purification of virtue, the objects of attention are different from those of the five middle purifications, but they are identical with those of the supramundane purification, operating together with it as coexistent, Saha Jata. Concentration Samadhi with reference to the Samadhi category of the path, there are two courses of action. Firstly, the way of one who practices pure insight only, Suddha Vipassana Yanika. He, after fulfilling purity of virtue and setting up mindful body contemplation, does not follow the way of tranquility, but the way of pure insight, such as purification of view, etc. Secondly, there is a course of one who practices both tranquility and insight, samatha vipassana yanika. He, after attaining the first jhana, etc., takes up the practice of insight by way of purification of view, etc. Of these two, one, the practice of pure insight and three part factors of the concentration category, samadhi khanda fulfill the functions of tranquility and purification of mind, chitta visuddhi, through the three kinds of concentration, known as emptiness concentration, conditionless and desireless concentration. 2. In the practice of tranquility followed by insight, the three path factors of concentration category fulfill the functions of tranquility and purification of mind. By way of the three stages of concentration, namely preparatory concentration, parikamma samadhi, access concentration, upachara samadhi and full concentration, panya samadhi and thereafter in the inside stage the above two functions are fulfilled by emptiness concentration etc. During the period of the preceding practice of purity of virtue and of mindful body contemplation, however, the three constituents of the concentration category fulfill the functions of momentary concentration, khanika samadhi. Wisdom, Panya The two constituents of wisdom category fulfill the functions of wisdom in the ways of both the practice of pure insight and that preceded by tranquility. After the setting up of the purification of virtue, and of mindful body contemplation. These remarks apply to both the mundane and the supramundane path factors. Stream Entry Sotapatti I shall now show the path of stream entry Sotapatti Magga in the supramundane path factors. It should be remembered that this book is aimed at the lowest of the stages of sanctity, namely the Bon Sinsan, Sukkha Vipasaka Sotapanna. At the present time, there are countless numbers of beings such as Visakha, Anathapindika, Sakka, the ruler of Devas, the four divine great kings, Chatum Maharajika Deva, who still continue to derive pleasure and ease within the round of rebirths inhabiting their respective celestial abodes. They are beings who have before them seven more rebirths in the sense-desire worlds, including the lower celestial worlds of the sense-sphere, and one rebirth each in the six worlds on the level of the fourth jhana, or the Vehafala Brahma worlds. The number of births in the Brahma worlds of the first, second and third jhana is undetermined. Why are they called stream enterers, Sotapanna? The five great rivers and the five hundred lesser ones that have their source in the Himalayas do not flow up but flow continuously down to the great ocean. Hence, they are called the Sota, stream or current. Similarly, Arya do not fall back to the state of worldlings but proceed continuously as Aryas until they attain 
Anupadisesa Nibbana, where here is no remainder of the aggregates of existence. In the case of the worldlings, although they may attain rebirth in the highest celestial worlds, they possess still the liability to be reborn in the lowest avici hell. But in the case of Ariyas, wherever they may be reborn, they do not fall into the lower worlds of misery, but possess a continuous tendency of being reborn in a higher world. The worldlings may attain the state of Tihetuka Brahmas in the fine material Rupa or non-material Arupa worlds. They still possess the liability of being reborn in an unhappy form of existence, Dugati, as Ahetuka, creatures such as dogs or pigs. Whether it be the place of rebirth or the status attained in each rebirth, Noble ones, Ariya, do not regress, but proceed higher and higher, from one world to the next, or from one status to another, until, after many rebirths and many worlds have passed, they reach the highest worlds and the highest status, when they discard the five aggregates entirely and attain the Anupadisesa Nibbana. The process by which this straight path of ascent is traversed is called Dhammosota the stream of Dhamma. It comprises the stream of right view, Samma Ditthi Sota, the stream of right thought, Samma Sankappa Sota, and so forth, up to the stream of right concentration, Samma Samadhi Sota. The stream of right view means the establishment of the great realm of right view, Samma Ditthi, where the light of the four noble truths can be clearly perceived. This great realm of right view is established by replacing the great Anusaya plane of Sakaya Ditti, the proclivity for personality belief. This resembles the rising of the sun after the night is over, when darkness is dispelled and the light is established. In the same way, the great kingdom of light of right view remains established throughout many lives and many world cycles until the attainment of Anupadisesa Nibbana. This light increases and becomes more and more firmly established from one rebirth to another. It also resembles a person born blind due to cataracts covering both his eyes, who on receiving good treatment is cured of the cataract and gains sight. From the moment the cataract disappears, the view of the earth, the mountains, the sky with sun, moon and stars, etc., is open to him and remains so throughout his life. Similarly, the noble stream enterers, Sotapanna Ariya, gain the view of the three characteristics of existence, Tilakhana, and of the four noble truths, and do not lose it. This is how the path factor, right view, is firmly established. The canonical text says, Samma de Tassa Samma Sankappo Pahoti, in him who has right view, right thought, progresses. According to this, if right view is established, also right thought, which consists of intention and plan to escape from worldly ills, nikamma, and to protect others from harm and suffering, becomes established and thrives from one rebirth to another until the attainment of the final goal. This is how right thought is established. Samma Sankappassa Samma Vacha Pahoti In him who has right thought, right speech progresses. When the intention and plan to escape from worldly ills and to see others happy and unharmed is established, there will be right speech free from the four faults, the Vachi Du Charita. And this will become progressively established. This is how right speech is established. Samma vachassa samma kamanto pahoti In him who has right speech, right action progresses. If speech free from verbal misconduct is established, bodily acts free from the threefold bodily misconduct, kaya du charita, will become progressively established. This is how right action is established. Samma kamantassa 
samma ajivo pahoti in him who has right action right livelihood progresses when views intentions speech and acts become pure the forms of livelihood will also be pure and one who will never resort to low and base forms of livelihood this is how right livelihood is established samma ajivasa samma vayamo pahoti in him who has right livelihood right effort progresses when views intentions speech acts and livelihood become pure energy and effort of a kind that is never devoted to misconduct or wrong livelihood becomes permanently established this is how right effort is established samma vayamasa samma sati pahoti in him who has right effort right mindfulness progresses similarly right mindfulness that has its root in the efforts of morality concentration and wisdom become firmly established from one rebirth to another this is how right mindfulness is established samma satissa samma samadhi pahoti in him who has right mindfulness right concentration progresses in the same way right concentration which is rooted in mindful attention to the work of morality concentration and wisdom also becomes permanently established and thus becomes endowed with great power over the mind this is how right concentration is established it is in this way that the eight part factors magganna called dhamma streams dhamma sota become progressively established throughout many lives and many worlds from the moment a being attains the stage of a stream enterer sotapanna until he finally attains anupadesesa nibbana although from the moment when body contemplation is set up there is such progress as has been shown earlier yet so long as the state of stability or constancy of progress niyama is not reached that being is not as yet a noble one ariya it is the path of stream entry sotapatti magga that is the starting point of the ariya sota the holy stream as soon as beings reach the path of stream entry they enter the domain of the noble ones hence it is said sotam adito pajjingsu papuning suti sotapanna they are called stream enters as they enter or reach the holy stream for the first time this ends our answer to the question why are they called sotapannas as soon as beings reach the stage of noble ones they transcend the state of worldlings they are no longer beings of the world the mundane lokiya but have become beings of the supra mundane lokuttara they are no longer committed to the sufferings of the round of rebirth patta dukha having become beings of nibbana throughout the series of many existences that may still be before them they will never fall back from the first stage of the realization of nibbana which they have achieved as stream enterers they are no longer liable to return to the anusaya plane of sakkaya ditti the proclivity for personality belief or to the state of worldlings they are firmly established on the first stage of sa upadi sesa nibbana the nibbana realized during lifetime and will during their remaining existences enjoy at will the happiness of humans devas and brahmas these eight part factors occur simultaneously to these noble ones only at the instant of the attainment of a path or a fruition that is in supra mundane consciousness where however mundane wholesome volitional acts lokiya kusala kamma are concerned the three constituents of sila category associate only with sila kusala kamma but the three constituents of the samadhi category and the two of the panya category associate with many kinds of kusala kamma 
Although the three path factors of the Sila category associate only with Sila Kusula Kamma, they are firmly established in the Noble Ones as non-contravention, Aviti Kamma, throughout their remaining lives. Chapter 9 How to Practice the Bodhipakhya Dhammas Beings who encounter a Buddha Sasana have to set up purification of virtue, Sila Visuddhi, first, and then strive to acquire the requisites of enlightenment, Bodhipakhya Dhamma, in order to enter the stream of the Noble Ones, Ariya Sota. I shall now give a brief description of how the practice should be undertaken. The practice of the seven purifications, Satta Visuddhi, amounts to practicing the Bodhipakhya Dhammas. In particular, the purification of mind concerns only persons who follow the way of tranquility practice. The purification of knowledge and vision of what is and what is not path, Magga Magga, Jnana Dasanna Visuddhi, concerns only those highly conceited or self-deceiving persons, Adimanika, who think they have attained the holy paths and fruits when really they have no such attainment. The purification of virtue, the purification by overcoming doubt, the purification by knowledge and vision of the way, the supramundane purification by knowledge and vision, all these apply to many different types of persons. Of these five purifications, that of virtue has been dealt with in the chapter on the path factors under the Sila category. It consists of keeping the precepts that have right livelihood as the eighth, Ajivatthamakka, Sila. Purification of mind may be undertaken by practicing mindful body contemplation. For that purpose, some take up mindfulness of breathing and, generally, it may be said that if attention can rest on the out and in breath whenever one wishes and in whatever the body posture may buy, then mindful body contemplation is established. Some persons practice that contemplation by way of the four postures of the body, Iriyapatha, in accordance with the text in the Satipatthana Sutta. When going, he is aware, I am going, etc. Others take up clear comprehension, Sati, Sampajanya, of bodily activities. Others practice body contemplation by attention to the 32 parts of the body. The first five are hair of the head, hair of the body, nails, teeth, skin, and are called Tacha Panyachaka, the skin pentered. If attention can be firmly and steadily placed on these parts at will, in a bodily posture, body contemplation is established. Attention can also be directed to the bones of the body. Body contemplation will be established if attention can be steadily and firmly placed on the bones of the head, skull. If, from the beginning, the physical and mental processes, nama rupa, connected with the body, that is, its functions and the attention given to all these processes can be analytically discerned. And if attention to such work is firm and steady, the work of body contemplation is accomplished. This gives concisely the method of mindful body contemplation. The work of purification of you, Dikthi Visuddhi, can be considered accomplished if the six elements, Dhatu, can be analytically perceived. In the work of the purification by overcoming doubt, Kankhavitaranya Visuddhi, if the causes for the appearance of the six elements mentioned above can be clearly perceived, it is accomplished. It must be clearly perceived that the causes for the appearance of Pathavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayo, Akasa, the first five elements are Kamma, Consciousness, Chitta, Temperature, Uttu, and Nourishment, 
ahara and that the causes for the appearance of the six types of consciousness chitta the sixth element are the corresponding six objects of perception by the purification by knowledge and vision of the way patipada jnana dasanna visuddhi is meant the three characteristics of impermanence suffering and not self if these are clearly perceived in the six elements mentioned above this purification is attained the supramundane purification by knowledge and vision lokuttara jnana dasanna visuddhi consists of the knowledge pertaining to the four holy paths of stream entry etc magganyana this shows concisely the five middle purifications chapter 10 the heritage of the sasana these 37 requisites of enlightenment treated in the preceding chapters are the heritage of the buddha they are the heritage of the sasana they constitute gems of the sasana that are priceless and invaluable i shall now examine what constitutes this heritage of the sasana sasana dayajja by heritage is meant property given as legacy by parents to their children who are fit to receive it as heirs dayada this applies also to the heritage of the sasana which is the buddha's heritage buddha dayajja as to the nature of that heritage there are two kinds worldly amisa and dhamma heritage the worldly heritage consists of the four requisites of a bhikkhu namely arms food robes dwelling place and medicines the dhamma heritage are the three trainings sikkha sila samadhi panya the seven purifications and the 37 requisites of enlightenment there are two kinds of dhamma heritage namely mundane lokiya and supramundane lokuttara the mundane one consists of the above three trainings on the mundane level the six mundane purifications and the requisites of enlightenment as far as associated with those mundane purifications the supramundane dhamma heritage consists of the three trainings on the supramundane level the supramundane seventh purification and the supramundane requisites of enlightenment mundane dhamma heritage may be divided into one that dependent on the round of rebirths vatthanisitta and two that tending towards the ending of the round of rebirths vivatthanisitta or into one stable dhamma heritage niyata and two unstable dhamma heritage aniyata the practice of the three trainings morality etc if directed towards the attainment of worldly positions such as mentor or teacher of kings or governments or towards the acquisition of dignity titles degrees power retinue and property or towards the attainment of rebirth as noble and highly placed humans and devas this is called dhamma heritage dependent on the round of rebirths there are three forms of the round of rebirths the round of defilements kilesa vatta the round of kamma kamma vatta and the round of kamma resultants vipaka vatta vivatta means nibbana which is the end of these three rounds of rebirths the practice of morality concentration and wisdom directed towards the ending of these rounds of rebirths is called dhamma heritage tending towards the ending of the round of rebirths vivatta nisitta dhamma dayajja with reference to the classification of stable and unstable the great realm of proclivity towards personality belief sakkaya ditti anusaya in which worldlings puttujana are involved is like a great and deep ocean of burning hot embers 
the morality, concentration and wisdom occasionally practiced by worldlings can be compared to droplets of rain falling into that great ocean of burning hot embers. Such utterances as I fulfill Sila, I possess Sila, I practice Samadhi, I know, I am wise and clever, I perceive mind and matter, Nama Rupa, I contemplate mind and matter, are declarations about morality, concentration and wisdom, which revolve around the personality belief which is concerned with I, and thus resemble the raindrops falling into the great ocean of red-hot embers. Just as the heat of these embers absorb the raindrops and make them disappear, so does the great kingdom of personality believe absorb the worldling's acts of morality, concentration and wisdom, and makes them disappear as they are unstable. Though worldlings may possess morality, concentration and wisdom, their possession of them is temporary, tadhanga. In the case of Sotapannas, their mundane morality of keeping the mundane precepts with right livelihood as the eighth, Lokiya Ajivatthamakka Sila, their mundane concentration firmly directed to the noble qualities of the triple gem, and their mundane wisdom perceiving the four noble truths, all these are of the rank of stability. They are like raindrops falling into the great lake and never disappear, even throughout many lives. This shows the nature of the mundane Lokiya Dhamma heritage. The supramundane states of morality, concentration and wisdom, the supramundane seventh purification and the requisites of enlightenment, Bodhipakya Dhamma, accompanying the eight kinds of supramundane consciousness, are Vivittanisitta and are stable. Also the mundane morality etc. In the case of Aryas who have attained their supramundane state are likewise stable. In such persons there is no longer any possibility of their becoming dusila, immoral, asamadita, uncomposed, tupanya, unwise or andabala, foolish. Persons who lack faith, saddha, and zeal do not even conceive the idea that the higher attainments of the purification are the heritage which they can acquire in this very life. Because they lack energy, virya, they are reluctant to put forth effort that involves privations. They are liable to reject such effort as impossible. Because they are weak of will, their minds are not fixed on such kind of work. They change their mind whenever they listen to various theories and expositions. Because they lack knowledge and wisdom, they reject such work as being beyond their capabilities. Therefore the Buddha has urged all beings to strengthen their weak idipadas, bases of success, such as zeal, etc. Only then can new desires and new thoughts arise. Only those who possess one or other of the four idipadas as foundation can enjoy the full benefits of the Buddha's heritage. Others who are without any of these idipadas will get the opportunity to enjoy only some of the superficial benefits without the chance of enjoying the essence of the heritage. Some may not even have the opportunity to enjoy those superficial benefits because they have squandered the heritage and thus become severed from the Buddha's and the Sasana's heritages. The heirs of the Sasana may be classified into 1. Stable or constant heirs and 2. Unstable or inconstant heirs. People who never obtain knowledge of impermanence and not self within themselves are called unstable heirs. They may be disciples or heirs of the Buddha today and may become disciples or heirs of another teacher tomorrow. They may scorn and harm the Buddha Sasana. Even in the present world, there are persons who have changed their faith from the Buddha Sasana to other religions and who scorn and undermine the Sasana. 
how easily they can change after death and in another birth can be imagined. Such a one can be a disciple of the Buddha this month and a disciple of another teacher next month and a disciple of the Buddha this year and the disciple of another teacher next year. A disciple of the Buddha this life and the disciple of another teacher in the next. Therefore it is said that the Putrajanas, worldlings, are so called because they look up to the faces of various teachers. This means that in the unfathomable past, samsara, worldlings have never been constant in the choice of a teacher in whom they have taken refuge. The occasions on which they have approached a Buddha and taken refuge in him are very few indeed. Sometimes they took refuge in Brahma, sometimes in Sakka, Indra, sometimes in various deities, sometimes in planets, spirits and ogres. And they have done so as if these refuges were almighty. The number of false teachers are very numerous in the world and so is the number of existences in which worldlings have taken refuge in such false teachers. While worldlings continue to wander and drift in samsara, replete with false attachments to personality belief, they will continue to change their teachers. How frightful, terrible and repellent is the state of a worldling. Whenever a worldling changes his teacher and refuge, a change also occurs in the doctrines and principles on which he depends for his guidance. Sometimes worldling accept the purified morality, adhisila, of a Buddha, but more often they accept the moral practices of numerous other teachers. Also in the matter of views, the existences in which they accept right view are extremely few, while the lives in which they depend on wrong views are extremely numerous. Of the countless errors and perversities possessed by worldlings, that of seeking refuge in false teachers is one of the gravest errors causing them great harm. This is because taking refuge in wrong teachers leads to wrong moral principles and practices and thus the precious and rare achievement of rebirth as a human being, Manusatta Dulabha, becomes entirely like a tree producing the evil fruits of rebirth in the worlds of misery instead of being like a great wishing tree bearing the fruits of good rebirths. This shows the future path of unstable heirs of the sasana. But those persons who perceive in themselves the characteristics of impermanence, anicca, and not self, anatta, are freed from the realm of personality belief. They become stable heirs of the sasana. Stable means here, that throughout their future lives in sansara, they are no longer inclined to seek refuge in false teachers. They become true children and heirs of the Buddha throughout the future succession of their rebirths. They become members of Bonsin San family. Their views of the incomparable qualities of the Buddha, the Dhamma and the Sangha become clearer and brighter from one rebirth to another. All the Dhamma heritages will prosper and increase in their minds, that is, the three path categories, morality, etc., the seven purifications and the thirty-seven requisites of enlightenment. They are beings who will invariably ascend to Anupadisesa Nibbana, the extinction of defilements without any groups or existence remaining. This shows the undeviating path of stable heirs of the Sasana. Good and virtuous persons did not put forth effort in past existences, which was aimed at their becoming heirs of bad heritages of the sasana. They did not practice morality, concentration and wisdom. In order to become heirs of unstable temporary heritages, but because they wished to become heirs of the stable heritages, Taking these facts into account and taking heed of the fact that the Buddha disapproved of the bad heritages of the sasana, those persons who have now become disciples of the Buddha should not permit themselves to become bad heirs or to become temporary unstable heirs. 
they should attempt to become heirs of the good heritages which are the requisites of enlightenment the bodhi pakkhya dhammas they should attempt to become stable heirs as regards to person deficient in wisdom the mere performance of good and meritorious acts has to be encouraged as beneficial but as to those persons who possess wisdom if they desire to become stable heirs either in this life or the next then they should establish in themselves firmly ajiva tamakka sila set up mindful body contemplation and try for at least 3 hours a day to achieve perception of the three characteristics of existence in the five aggregates of personality if they perceive any of the three characteristics they can become stable heirs and attain to the status of bonsin san a stream enterer here ends the manual of the requisites of enlightenment this has been the requisites of enlightenment bodhi pakkhya dipani a manual by the venerable lady sayada narrated by saif charai copyright 2007 buddhist publication society audio book copyright 2014 pariyati pariyati a non profit 501c3 organization offers a wide variety of books ebooks videos and audio books about the teachings of the buddha the pali language and vipassana meditation browse our complete catalog at www.pariyatti.org that's pariyatti.org